We're recording. Welcome everyone to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on December 15th, 2022. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Uh, pursuant to the decision of the town of Amherst, as permitted by the state, we are meeting remotely. I'm gonna call on members now to make sure that we can hear you and you can be heard. Uh, just to dot the I's. Uh, I'm Sam, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, Tim? Uh, yes, I'm here. Katie? Here. Matt? I'm here. David? Here. Michelle? Present. Robin? Uh, mute, perhaps? Couldn't hear you, Robin. Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. And Andy? Present. Okay, so uh, looks like we're all here. Um, so I took the minutes last week. We do need someone. I believe uh, someone volunteered last week. Uh, Robin, is that still uh, good to go? I'll assume that's a yes. Yep, no, I'm all set. Okay, uh, and it is a recorded meeting. Um, we're going to, you know, well, the first, first item on our agenda is to approve any outstanding minutes. Uh, to my understanding, there are two sets of minutes. Uh, Matt provided his email, his minutes to the committee uh, either early this week or last week. Uh, I sent I him think one on Monday. On Monday, I found one very minor edit. Um, did everyone get a chance, or who had a chance to look at the minutes? I'm seeing some folks. Does anyone have any? further edits they'd like to communicate to Matt. All right, Matt, you're in, you should be in the publishing business. Um, so it seems that everything's good to go uh, with those minutes. Do we have- What's uh, the date on those minutes, Sam? Those were December 1st. The minutes were from the meeting of December 1st, uh, 2022. Does uh, anyone have uh, what wished Andy? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, let's pr proceed to a roll call vote to approve the minutes of December 1st as submitted. Uh, I'll vote yes. Tim? Uh, yes, aye. Katie? Aye. Matt? Aye. David. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Robin. Aye. Andy. Aye. So it is unanimous by an eight to zero vote. Minutes are approved. Um, I sent some minutes yesterday uh, to committee members for the meeting of December 8th. Um, I've seen them, of course. Uh, I don't know who else has had an opportunity to look at them or not. Um, did any, did, who had a chance to look at them? Actually, I did. I'm seeing at least five hands. I'm seeing six hands with two down. Um, of those who saw them, were there any further or requested edits? I'm not seeing any. We do have, uh, a majority of the committee who saw the minutes. Uh, so I think it makes sense for us to go ahead and approve them as submitted. Is there a motion? I move to approve the minutes from December 8th. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? No? Okay. So, um, Proceed with a roll call vote to approve the minutes of December 8th as submitted. Uh, I'll vote yes. Tim. Yes, I. Katie. I have to abstain since I didn't read them, sorry. Okay. Matt. Aye. David. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Robin. Aye. Andy. Abstain. So the vote is six to zero with two abstentions. Motion passes. Um, next item on our 
agenda is public comment. Uh, uh, before you, Sam, sorry. Yes. Uh, my minutes of November 17 were discussed at the last meeting. And my recollection that was that, and I can't remember who, maybe was that Robin perhaps would had a couple changes and I have not heard from her. So I haven't, once I do, I can change them, but. Uh, I, I apologize. I realized no. that as I was setting up today that I hadn't gotten those two. I will okay. do it after the meeting today. That's fine. Okay. Did we, I can't remember. I believe we, we approved them. We approved oh, we did them approve with them. My, so. uh, my spoken. We with the assumption right. okay. of uh, minor edits. So I'll just get the final copy to sign you once I hear from Robin. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. So uh, next agenda item on our meeting is public comment, as is the case with any uh, committee meeting, uh, as I've learned. Um, I see a few community members in the audience and our attendees here. Uh, I'd like to open up the floor in case any community members or attendees have a public comment. If you do, please raise your hand. I'm not seeing any hands. I'll ask again uh, if there's any public comments. It appears that there are no public comments. So, uh, I will then consider that agenda item closed and we'll move on. Um, so now we are back to where we left off at the last meeting um, at 920 to 9.30. We were going through the proposals. We've already provided straw poll ratings and we were providing brief commentaries for each proposal as to our thought process of why we gave the straw poll rating that we did. Sonia, are you able to pull up that spreadsheet again that we had uh, displaying last week? That would be the spreadsheet with both the dollar amounts and the projects. Okay, uh, Robin, I see your hand is up. But we can't yep. hear you. Yep. Sorry, I keep muting and unmuting. Um, I just want, I had, we had a historic commission meeting yesterday. We revisited the um, North Amherst Church application. And I just have some comments that I'd like to deliver before we start our deliberative discussion. So whenever that's appropriate, let me know. Um, well, we are sort of in process of deliberation, even though it's just individuals making their own brief commentaries. Uh, we can finish all of the projects and then have you do it, or you could do it now if you wish. Uh, it's either way would be fine. How long of a duration do you think your comments are? I just I have like a few, just a few sentences. Sure, um, go ahead. It just go basic. Ahead. It, the the the, um, the discussion re revolves around the nature of um, the. Uh, the structure of the ask and the number of estimates. And so uh, we as a, as a commission just wanted to state that we are in support of using the funds for church, the church's rehabilitation. And we recognize the urgent nature of some of the repairs, um, but we are concerned about the speed of how the proposal has put, been put together through, through no one's fault, um, the short time frame for estimates and um, without a better sense of how costs might be minimized since this looks like a, a property that may need um, a number of things addressed that might fall under CPA. Um, so when I uh, when the church presented and I asked Kuhn Riddle a specific question about uh, the possibility for a repair that just tightened up the roof for this season so that a better scope of work for the whole project could come forward, um, there seemed to be an affirmative answer to that question. So we would like to request that of, if it's possible to request that of the applicant with um, an idea of supporting a smaller um, ask and uh, want to understand the nature of how reserve funds, whether that can be awarded um, immediately to address the urgent nature of it um, and 
I think that's basically it. So if people have me have questions, if I wasn't clear, you can ask me at any point, but I just wanted to get that out of there at the head. Of okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Robin. Interestingly enough, the first item for comments related to our discussion is the North Amherst Church. Uh, Matt, I see that your hand is up. Yeah. So, Robin, um, is the Historical Commission saying they would prefer a smaller grant instead of the 159,000 or, or in addition? You're muted. I'm just going to unmute for a while if that. I'm, I'm also taking notes here, so I'm doing triple duty. Um, we are saying that we would ask for a smaller amount to address the immediate issue it, with the expectation that the church could then take time within the next CPA cycle to come back to address uh, larger issues like replacement of the entire roof. I think there's some questions around um, what that roofing material would be, what would be appropriate within the secretary standards in terms of cost, and also um, potentially factoring in whether or not you would have a, a, a later solar installation on the roof um, to be able to address kind of the whole, the, whole, the project, time to, to address the project as a whole so that costs are both minimized and um, and you know appropriate actions can be taken. So this would be a suggestion that we would um, ask the CPA to approve a smaller estimate if we can get one for just a leak repair that would be funded hopefully before July 1st. Um, and then we would ask that we would try to work with the with the church to develop a better um, scope of work for the entire project um, that they could come back, that they could phase, come back to CPA for further funds instead of rushing into $158,000 that um, we only have one estimate for. So that's, that's, does that answer your question? I think what you're saying is instead. Yes. <laughs> okay. Instead of that. Sam, could I chime in on that one? Uh, yes, Sonia. I think that if there's a lot of uncertainty about this um, project, uh, I think the best way to move forward on this would be to table it and um, defer it down the road. I mean, you can put the money, the money's in the reserve. So if they wanted to come back for this year and there was another proposal that's ready, we could see it before the end of the fiscal year. So, um... We would table it now. Mm -hmm. the, eight, the historical commission could work with the applicant to come back with a different proposal that we felt was more appropriate. If they're ready, if they get it in time for fiscal year twenty three to bring it up then, then that would work. If not, if there's, there's a, if there's a reserve voted for fiscal year twenty four, that okay. would also work. So fiscal year twenty three would be up until June thirtieth, twenty twenty three, correct? Well, within reason, I would say. Um, I'd say around March is a good okay. timing because it takes time to go through all the processes. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Well, what, yeah. we're, what we're going to do is we're going to continue talking about the seven remaining uh, proposals of which the North Church is one. So we're going to retain the standardized process for all of the um, proposals that are before us. We're not going to discuss at this point in time uh, whether to table it or not. And uh, whether or not we will determine if we use cash reserves or not. But uh, thank you, Robin, for bringing up your comments related to that. Uh, so I'd like for us to stay on track. Although, uh, Tim, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I was going to just, you just answered my question. So uh, my opinion is we need, when we get to the discussion of tabling, it needs to table and what they, the applicant needs to come back with is the emergency need for this fiscal year. So anyway, that's, but you said Thank we're you. going to be discussing that future. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Tim. So um, again, for, your hand is still up, Robin. Is Sorry that, about that. Okay. 
So um, for those who may not have been in the meeting last time uh, in the audience, what we're doing is we're going through each proposal. Uh, we're at the point where we're talking about proposal number nine, which is preserving Zion Church and committee members will have a very brief comment as to uh, the thoughts of why they might have voted, oh, excuse me, why they might have provided the rating, no votes, provided the rating that they did, uh, just a very simple, quick uh, summation of it, if they wish, there's no requirement to. Um, based on the order, I'm gonna continue with the uh, alternating who speaks first. It just so happens that the uh, person we left off with speaking first last time was you, Robin. Uh, and so the first person to speak on this, the Zion Church, uh, as to why they might have provided the rating they did would be uh, Andy. Uh, can you hear us? I, I'm not seeing you. I got a different view. There you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. I can. I'm so, um, yeah, so I, I gave this one a four. Um, I was very sort of I was really moved by the amount of deterioration and issues with the facility, as well as the parish size. So I think that um, as we consider this versus South, um, the South Congregational, which, which you know whether this is a fair thing to say or not, has a larger community that they can sort of draw upon for funds. The Zion Church, I believe they said, had like 30 members or something to that effect. Um, so this is one I think of an urgent need and not a, a really. I don't know that they necessarily have a, a, a great vehicle to raise funds sort of organically through traditional fundraising. I think that this is an organization that really could benefit from a, a little bit of a boost. So that's why okay. I gave this a four. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, that would make me next. Um, I gave this, where is it? One moment. I gave this a four as well. Interestingly, did we all give this one a four? We did. Um, I had questions on the initial project, given the size of it and the uh, lack of clarity regarding the scope of work and the estimates affiliated with it. Um, I did recognize in the project, uh, having visited it and also seen the um, uh, presentation and the photos and everything that it, it it is certainly in very bad shape on the South West corner. Uh, and I was glad to see that the applicants uh, honed in or re revised their request to reflect the more urgent aspects. Um, I think my understanding was that they looked at this as the most immediate urgent need of the proposal. Uh, and we can talk further if there's a, an emergency option distinct from this proposal. Um, but they, my understanding was this was for addressing the worst part of the uh, damage. Uh, but anyway, um, that was my thinking in terms of a four, given that it's a roof, it's certainly a historic building. Um, it is in very bad shape for the portion affiliated with this revised request. Uh, and that was my thought process. Um, Matt. You're muted. Yeah, I just realized. Um, so with respect to the immediate need, my understanding from the architect from Coon Riddle, who I thought was very informative in the initial presentation, was that um, he felt that at least medium term, like five to 10 years, the entire roof replacement, which was the initial thing, was not necessary. And that um, the, 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 the focused um, work around parts of the roof and eaves um, was what would uh, keep the roof part of the structure um, sound for at least the medium term. And um, I my my takeaway, and I don't know if this is accurate, of his comment about doing something before this coming winter was something like you know putting tarps on or or something like that, um, just like really quick fixes to to just do something 
um, to, to prevent uh, uh, incoming water for this winter. Now, in general, my thought about the, this proposal, I think I made the comment when we initially discussed this, um, in, uh, when we initially had the presentations, uh, and it's a little bit different than Andy's point of view. Like my concern is this is a very large building with a pretty significant backlog of maintenance. And I, I, I'm not sure that the CPA is capable of doing all of the backlog of maintenance here. And I'm not seeing that the congregation is going to be able to do it either. So I'm, I'm sort of concerned about what, what and I don't know if this is part of Robin's concern. Is this is this is this going to work? Okay. Like if we do this, uh, is is the building on a sustainable footing right now? So could you communicate the the thought process behind your giving in a rating of four? Um, well, I as I said um, in the initial. Uh, when we were discussing this first, um, this is a, a very obviously significant structure in town. That's an important structure that a lot of people are familiar with. So, and um, roof work is urgent and I think should be supported. So I think it's the kind of project that the CPA should should fund. But I gave it a rating lower than I did for the South Church because I thought a the proposal wasn't as 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 clear and b I'm also just concerned long term about the the overall maintenance long term of the building. Okay. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, Tim. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I I didn't realize we were going to be discussing this in order, so I already made some of my my comments. Uh, I gave it a four because I think, and the four is only for the roof and eve discussion that coon riddle talked about i would give it let for this year i would give it like a two for the rest of it i just don't think we should uh allocate additional funds until we have a much better proposal i felt not at all comfortable with the proposal it was sort of a we had one one bid we need more bids etc 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 so but i do feel we need to do that emergency and i think we need to keep work with coon riddle perhaps uh, or the applicant needs to to get that number and i don't think it's going to be 158 700 so whoever proposed that earlier about tabling it until they came back with a new number only for the coon riddle what i would call emergency repair for right now and I would also suggest, as I think I did earlier, that it come out of our reserves. I think that's what our reserves are for. So those are my comments. Uh, just to, so that I understand what you said, I believe you're indicating that um, although you gave it a four for the ask, the revised ask amount of 158.7, right. your thought process is that there's an emergency repair that has been discussed that would be a lower amount and it would be worthwhile to uh, get more information on that and consider that as it relates to cash reserves as opposed to uh, where we're at. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I would not okay. vote for the 158.7 okay. now yep. because I think it's a um, incomplete number. I understand. Thank you. Um, next on the list, David. What did you call it, David? Yes. Um, <clears throat> a couple of observations. Um, number one, um, it is a very large church. It's an old building, but uh, as uh, was just mentioned by Tim, when he talked about the roof and others have talked about the roof, uh, the work on the roof need to be done if this is a project we are going to support. Uh, as uh, building contractors will tell you, stop the water. And then you can address the other problems that you have. Uh, I would say the churches and the materials I've looked at and also observation and passing by there does have a small membership. 
but small membership does not necessarily mean they do not have or cannot get the resources from members, uh, additional resources to support the project. So I would, um, and I would also say as a, a North Amherst resident, uh, observing what is happening right across in front of the church, the renovation of uh, the library. And uh, there is an interest, uh, I would say it appears to be an interest from the town and also the citizens of, of North Amherst. And I would hope the entire community to improve that whole section of um, uh, the buildings that are in, the, in that section of town, especially with the uh, renovation and expanding of the library, the church. Uh, we have uh, new uh, condominiums, uh, apartments in the area. So um, we need to, I would like for us to do what we can in terms of being sure that adequate funds have been provided to address the roof. Thank you, David. What I'm hearing is that you're saying that your rating of four was based upon the urgency of need with a roof repair when there is water leaking and the uh, yes. location location in historic nature. Thank you, David. Uh, yeah. Katie. Thanks, Sam. I, I, I just reviewed my notes um, about this, which I had written down that the south side needs to be repaired immediately. North side, not as urgent, but steps to stabilize uh, are urgent. So that was my rating. It's a prominent historic, as everyone has said, you know, uh, building in North Amherst at that intersection, it needs or that needs are urgent. So that's why I rated it a four as a priority. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Michelle. I don't have a lot of new new things to add at this point. But yes, urgency, <clears throat> emergency roof. Um, that that revised um, estimate and the location of it. But I, I do hear all of the concerns about uncertainty and I do recall them saying that they would have be unlikely to have um, much external funding outside of CPA, I think, um, at this point. Thank you, Robin. Uh, do you need my comment? Uh, yeah, the thought is that you spoke previously on behalf of the Historic Commission. Now we're asking members okay. uh, to have a brief comment related to the straw poll rating that they provided. We all happen to have provided. For okay. Us. Yep. I'm going to say pretty much all the same things. Um, an urgent need to stop uh, any damage that is occurring right now um, and a revisited um, uh, revisit of the proposal to structure um, a better sense of what needs to happen next and whether CPA funds would be appropriate for it. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the next project uh, that we uh, have on the list is the South Congregational Church Steeple Restoration and Preservation. Andy was first last time, so I'll go first this time. I gave it a five. Uh, I was impressed with the thoroughness of the proposal, uh, with the nature, uh, with the reviews of, and the uh, research in terms of uh, how to approach the project. I was impressed with the volume, the extended volume of community support exhibited for the project. Uh, it, it's unequivocally historic uh, preservation, historic building, and an important historic building in town. Uh, all of that together, uh, along with uh, their contribution for the engineering, uh, seemed to me to be an ideal uh, proposal uh, and one that is in need. There is an urgency, if you look at the photos of the uh, damage with the steeple with the bell, and uh, we certainly wouldn't want that to come down. Uh, so all of that packaged together is why I gave it a five. Uh, Matt? Yes, I agree with everything Sam said. 
I just have one thing to add, which is um, I appreciate that the church has uh, tried to maintain the steeple over time, and it's gotten to a point where um, spot maintenance uh, is no longer appropriate, and uh, thus they've they've come with this uh, uh, proposal to restore it complete properly. So I think that's very. I think they've done the the congregation has done a, a great job otherwise in maintaining the building and um, it's an important uh, structure and uh, this is a very appropriate and well um, put out a proposal. Thank you. Um, Tim. Sorry, I also gave it a five and I would like to publicly state I was very impressed with their application, a very thorough, uh, one of our the best proposals I've seen in this process. Uh, secondly, um, they indicated I, I do feel it's an immediate need. Uh, and I would when we get to the point of distributing money, depending on how much money we have left to distribute, I would either fund all or some of this with fiscal 23 funds uh, to save some fiscal 24 funds for other needs. But I think we have a significant reserve that we could use for this project. Again, whether we want to fund it all or some of it, that's for a later discussion. But that's my opinion when we get to that point. Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, David. Uh, my comments are basically about the same. Stop the water. Uh, the work on the steeple, whatever is happening, most likely water is getting in there. Um, I was impressed by the uh, committee members or officers of the church, and it seemed as though so uh, from their com from their proposal plus their conversation or response to questions that they're in a position to uh, add or secure additional funds to continue the work on the church. And I think I had a four there for them. Okay, uh, thank and you, David. Um, yeah. Sam, can I talk? I can't raise my hand. I'm sorry, because I'm sharing yes. the screen. Um, everybody keeps alluding to uh, paying some paying for some of these in fiscal year 23 as reserve. If it's going to be a fiscal year 23 award, it gets tabled. It's off of this because we have to come back with a whole process for fiscal year 23 to do that. This is separate. This is fiscal year 24 budget. So we can do it, but it's going to be a process to do it. If, if I hear you correctly, Sean, you're saying that if we wish to award funds for a project in the near term prior to the commencement of fiscal year 24, if we right. wish for them to be able to use them, we cannot do so with the current proposals. We have to have them resubmit. They can, we can, they can resubmit the same proposal. We can keep the same proposal, but it's a whole different process. This is for the fiscal year 24 budget that we're working on now. But, so if we're going to come back and appropriate money for this, for people to have prior to June 30th, then we're going to have to come back and do that separate. This is. All right. Let me, let me ask it this way. It uh, would be quick. I mean, you've already discussed it. You know what you want to yeah. do. It would probably be a one meeting. It, it, let, let me ask it this way. If we as a committee had somehow magically completed our entire fiscal year 24 process of awards, let's just say we had completed that mm -hmm. and we have an hour and a half left in the meeting. Are you indicating we can't commence at that time to discuss the cash reserves uh, for fiscal year 23? As long uh, as you're not using reserves to fund some of the, from some of the other projects. So as long as you're, you don't use up the reserves for fiscal year 24 projects. So basically what I'm saying, you have one point, which I say 1.9 million. Right. But if you, if you add the reserves to that, right. then you're going to have a 2.4 million available to spend for these projects. I'm a bit confused. I know. It's, I know, perhaps, I know. perhaps we can talk about that at a later point right. after we get through all of these, the discussions. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think it makes sense for us to continue. Well, it's fine for members to reference their uh, uh, recognition or their own belief of a sense of urgency in a project. And uh, after we go through all of these, we can talk about how we may or may not fund them. Right, um, and I would also caution setting a precedence for, for, for doing this kind of thing because we have a process in time. And if we say, if we're in the middle of this process and we decide we're gonna we're gonna give them the money earlier because we feel they're gonna need it earlier. Although most of these people have said they can manage with it as of July 1st. Mm -hmm. We don't want to set a precedence where we're doing this all the time. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so we'll we'll continue with the um, proposals that we're talking about and we can still have discussions about how we wish to fund and when we wish to fund them based on urgency when we get to that point. Uh, we can discuss further, Sonia, uh, when we get through these uh, uh, in, a, in a bit more detail. Thank you, though, for uh, speaking up and communicating the distinction between fiscal year 23 reserves and, uh, excuse me, cash reserves and fiscal year budgeting for 24. Uh, the last person I spoke with on this project was... David. It was David. Okay. Uh, Katie. Um, I don't have too much to add. Um, very, I felt very similarly to the Zion um, request that there's, it's urgent. It's a prominent historic building. That's an anchor like Zion is to North Amherst. Uh, this is to South Amherst. Um, and, you know, again, this idea, I mean, I think Dave said it right, you know, stop the water. It's sort of this idea of, of, it, less is more, <laughs> like less now than waiting longer when the cost would be much greater. So that's okay. what I for. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Michelle. Um, yeah, exactly what Katie said. I, I was impressed with the wide range of community involvement, not just from the parishioners um, for this church and the events that they support. Um, and I also just wanted to be sensitive to the maybe the greater resources they might have as a big, um, bigger church in comparison with emergencies of other historic buildings like the other church. Okay, uh, Robin. Um, echoing what everyone has said, pretty much, um, it's urgent. It's an incredibly well put together proposal and a very clearly organized team of people. Um, my only two comments about it are that, um, one, I continue to, one of my objectives is, as has been and will continue to be to get, um, to get our applicants, if possible, to access other funds. And I'm not sure what the status on uh, emergency stabilization funds is with the Mass Historic Commission. I've been meaning to try to follow up with them and see what their process is, just because I'd love to see where appropriate um, we take advantage of other other funding. Um, and my second comment is escaping me. Um, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> OK, uh, thank you. Um, Andy. Nothing new to add. Um, keep it brief. Okay, there we go. Uh, the next project. Uh, Sam, Sam, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That's yes, no, you didn't oh. see the hand. I just, I just raised it. Uh, I'm not, maybe, I'm not able to see all the uh, hands on oh, my screen that, for some that's reason. That's not a, not a problem. The only thing I wanted to just, uh, I think we need to talk about. At least I have a need to talk about it. There was an earlier comment. I forget who made it that the congregation in the North Church is very small, as opposed to the South Church, which has a lot of resources to explore other options, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I got the impression that maybe the CPA committee would give more, fun, more CPA funding to the group that didn't have as much of their own internal power, if you will, to seek other funds. I'm not sure I agree with that philosophy. And at some point we needed to talk about that. Um, so anyway, yep. just to throw that out. Uh, thank you, Tim. Yeah, we, we will talk further on these types of matters after we go through yeah. all of the individuals, uh, communications or representations as to why they provided the uh, rating that they did. Uh, I think it's helpful because these types of issues are being 
uh, brought up for all of us uh, before we're actually voting and making final decisions. Uh, uh, that's the purpose behind our straw rating and brief discussions is so that we can all hear these different things. So we're a bit mm -hmm. more thorough and informed of our process. But thank you, Tim. And again, uh, as with any of the other projects, when we get to that, you know, we'll have another point after we go through these where we'll begin to uh, speak more thoroughly, or at least with more uh, higher level of definition in each project. Uh, so um, the last person to speak on this was, if I'm- It uh, was uh, Andy. It was Andy, and this was the South Church, and that was the last person. So we're on to the conservation area improvements. And it appears that uh, if I, the person who started last time was me. So uh, Matt, you will be first. Uh, yeah. And I think I gave this a lower rating and um, I probably am not that different than the other members of the committee in believing that uh, the trails are an important part of the town. I'm a big trail user. Um, most of those uh, projects that they mentioned, I'm very familiar with. Um, I I also appreciate that um, Dave Zymek has been able to find some other sources of funding. So my my only reason for giving this a slightly lower rating in this cycle was um, that they already have some money to work on projects at Hickory Ridge, and uh, they they possibly have some other money to access other grants like immediately but that's not to say that next year when we don't have so many so much you know more requests than our budget that we wouldn't fund it then thank you matt uh tim yeah i gave this a very high rating i think it's a definitely a needed project when we get to the point of seeing how much money we have and, and debating on which projects get the full or some of the uh, funding, I think this is one of those projects. I think we should fund some, if not the, not entirely the in total amount, but we'll have that discussion when we get to uh, uh, funding uh, amounts. Thank you, Tim. David. Um, my thinking would be that, um, the funding issue and um, uh, it's a worthwhile project need to be funded but uh, as we look at our priorities as a um, committee and also the resources that we have um, take a very good look at whether we can or what we can do whether we can partially fund or look at funding in another year. Thank you, David. Uh, Katie. Yeah, I um, I rated this a four because I think the trails and <clears throat> um, are a jewel of um, our town and um, are what extremely well used and um, because they're so well used and so loved, they need a lot of support. Um, and I just feel exactly what David just said, which is we have some hard decisions to make. If we had, uh, you know, mon much more in funding, I would want to fully fund this, but I, I have a feeling that won't be possible. Uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, Michelle. I gave this a very high rating and I'm support as much funding as possible for it. Um, the public trails in Amherst bring together a community of, you know, all socioeconomic, aged, everything, all the classes, everybody uses it. Um, you know, they support public health and coming together. They were really well used in 2020 and they continue to be. And I have an intimate knowledge, I guess, about what it takes to make a bridge crossing safe, but also comply with federal regulations and it can be a $20,000 a $20,000 cost to it. So um, that protects our water resources. So to me, there's a lot of nexuses about the benefits of this project. Thank you. Well, Robin? Hold on a second. Pardon? 
Um, can you remind me what my score was? I think it was a four. I can't read. Um, Your score on this proposal was a four. Uh, okay. Um, so highly in support of it. Um, yeah, I think I gave it a four because of um, balancing it all against all the other projects. Okay. Uh, Andy? Uh, yeah, thanks, Kim. Um, yeah, I, I love this project as well. A lot of what people have already said. Um, I also, I think this is alluded to by several folks as well. I, I would anticipate this is not a full ask, but you know, any any dollar that they get, I think will have a direct tangible benefit to the, to the community. So um, whether we have to go significantly smaller or not, I'm still very supportive of it. And then also just point point of order here. This is a open space um, recommendation, correct? It's it's on here under recreation. Um, H. I think I think that um, the 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 presenter said the reason that was recreation was that, that so they could use the money not only on uh, land that was acquired with CPA funds. Correct. There's some like te technical okay. CPA thing. Correct. Modification. Okay. Thanks for the reminder. Okay. So uh, I gave this uh, proposal a three. Uh, I'm, you know, I agree that the trails in our town are a phenomenal resource, and I, I agree with Katie's comments that they really are a jewel. Uh, I use them. Um, I simply gave a lower rating based upon the budgetary issues and. Uh, the, the, the fact that we had awarded some uh, money in the past to for trails maintenance, uh, $25,000, and uh, as of this time, only $800 of that has been used. So um, my lower score was based on a questioning of the urgency for the full amount, uh, because we've had prior awards that have not been immediately used. I recognize the potential for things to come up quickly uh, and uh, be needed, but given the uh, task at hand, uh, I wasn't comfortable giving as much as I like our trails and like the projects and like the work, I felt it warranted to provide a lower score based upon the uh, ask amount uh, and the uh, prior balance. So, um, let's see. I believe that uh, is all of us on this proposal. The next proposal is the Crocker Farm School and Playgrounds. And I have Tim as the first person to comment on their rating, uh, their thought process behind their ratings. Okay. Well, as you see, I gave this a one, which is a pretty low rating. Uh, and here are my reasons. And I'm going to, I've made some notes and I just want to make sure I cover all the points. One, uh, the design and the monies that we uh, gave for this project is not going to happen until at least May of 2023. So I'm not at all sure what the cost is. Uh, secondly, that cost, I don't think is a good number. It's based on a, an industry standard of a cost per pupil. And uh, this is for the kindergarten and lower grade students. And uh, as I understand it, there are far fewer students and the math does not come out to be 450,000. Um, so I think we just, shouldn't fund this project. I just don't think that was developed well enough. Um, and uh, I think what we need to do is wait until fiscal 25 after we have the more complete design, have the applicant come back with a proposal which includes a variety of different bids, accurate numbers based on this project, not at industry standard. Um, and secondly, I think some of the issues were for ADA and we saw nothing about ADA funding. I think in a supplicant application, they need to come back with um, a discussion for us as to what type of process they use to seek ADA funding for this. They did not do that. So I just don't think, I'm not at all comfortable with approving any amount for this year for this project. Uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Um, uh, David. Yes, a um, couple of observations here. Um, 
my writing is based on what I felt was a need, uh, but there are, and looking at uh, some of the communication, some concerns that need to be addressed. So to say that there is a need does not necessarily mean it has to be funded this year. Okay. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, Katie. Um, yeah, I, I, I think this is an important project um, for a number of reasons. One, for the school itself, but for the greater community. And it is in need of repair and renovation. But I feel very similarly to what Tim described of not having enough information and wanting more information based on what the design ends up being and, and feeling more comfortable if this was either tabled and revisited during this fiscal year for funding um, or asked to come back. But I rated it a three because I think it's an important um, valuable resource for our community that is definitely needs to be um, attended to and, and especially and including the um, access for, you know, for those who are disabled. So I, it just feels like it, it needs to be done. And that's why I rated it a three, but I, I didn't feel I had enough information. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Michelle. Can you hear us, Michelle? Sorry, I was trying to find my um, spreadsheet. I used Andy's, sorry, I have the flu, so I'm a little off tonight. <laughs> we can come um, back to you if you want. No, no, it's okay. I, so three based on Andy's criteria is kind of the, the baseline. Um, I agree there is some vagueness that um, I saw in the proposal and I think it is super important. I think it would be incredibly well used by that area of town and obviously kindergartners need to be outside more. So I, that's why I got it. I gave it a three. Okay. Uh, Robin? Um, did I give it a three? You gave it a four. No, three. Excuse me. Okay. Three. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I think um, I would say based on uh, maybe a lack of urgency and again, clarity as other people have already spoken to. Uh, okay. Thank you. Andy? Yeah, I think it gave the high score. I mean, I, I had envisioned this as not being the full amount. I I think um, Timmy do a nice job articulating the concerns. I'm comfortable with, you know, reducing my score for this when it comes down to final vote uh, for that purpose. But um, it will be used more than just the, the kindergartners and the first graders. It's going to be used by the whole school. It's going to be used by other people in the town. I think within South Amherst specifically, it's it's uh, it's got an appeal um, and a draw uh, beyond just the school. I think it does get used on the weekends, would get used on the weekends. But um, I think every, all the points people make relative to um, the lack of detail are are are, are fair points. So I, I got it as a four. I'm comfortable moving it down. Uh, thank you, Andy. So I gave this a three. Um, I'd like to see the design that we awarded funds for. Uh, the uh, Doug indicate slaughter indicated that that would be forthcoming later or during during 2023. So I'd like to see the design uh, first. I think that's the right step in the process. It's certainly widely utilized, given that it's not just school; it's uh, used by members, but um, the applicant also indicated that they were fine and recognized that the 2025 cycle might be appropriate for them to be considered. So the combination of waiting for the design and the uh, communication from the applicant themselves related to potentially putting it in the next fiscal cycle weighed on my numbers. So I gave it a three. Uh, and... Is that the next we have Matt? Yeah, I rated it as two. Uh, the reasons is what other people have said. I think this proposal is preliminary given that the design hasn't happened. 
and uh, any other potential sources of funding haven't been uh, sought out. Okay. Uh, thank you, Matt. The next uh, proposal for uh, communication regarding our ratings is the Fort River Community Recreational Fields Project. Uh, first person to comment on that would be David, the Fort River Project. You're on mute currently, David. Come back to me. Okay. Um, we're asking uh, your comments regarding your rating for the Fort River Community Recreational Fields Projects, David. All right, I'm ready now. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. No problem. Um, the Fort River uh, Project. Um, I believe that I will you, be showing the rating I have a four there for that or three. You have a I have you down as having provided a five. If a that's five. Um, I I guess for me it seemed as though uh, we have uh some recreation issues we need to address. And it's my five uh, has more to do with the importance of the project and not necessarily saying that the funding has to happen now. It need to be, um, I would say, placed in the queue and um, we find a way to provide the funding. And I don't know, as we were talking earlier, whether that's uh, a year from now or two years from now. But uh, a project is very worthwhile and it's needed. Okay. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, Katie? Um, yeah, I'm totally in favor of this project and um, of providing some funding. Um, I rated it lower though, because I felt um, there were too many questions. Um, and so for this sort of significant amount of money, um, and it feels to me like the urgency is not around needing the money to actually do the project because that wouldn't happen until 2025 but it's around an endorsement and um i'm not sure that's the way we should be making our decisions and i'm really eager to hear more from the town about this kind of significant investment um not that they're making the decision on the cpa we are but i i'm just i'd like to hear more um, from them about it more detailed. And so my thought as I've been ruminating over this was about um, tabling it and having continued discussion so I could better understand, you know, we could get more information and understand exactly, um, you know, there's, the, my questions were around timing, it was around the cost, it was around the exact nature of what we would be funding. Um, and where the town is on this. So I just, I feel like I needed more information. And that's why I, that's why my ratings lower in terms of the sense of urgency. Um, I didn't, I, I didn't see that um, in terms of having the money to actually spend on doing the project um, next year. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Michelle. So um, these are definitely well-utilized fields and sort of the go-to fields for community sports in the town. And so that's why um, it got a fairly high rating for me. To be quite honest, I don't know how to think about the fact that it is, like Katie said, somewhat of an endorsement for a larger project. The fact that it's, um, I, we haven't heard a lot from the town. Um, I'm not saying that uh, those lowered my rating. I'm just interested to yeah, hear more. Um, about how maybe CPA has a position in that or doesn't. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Robin? Um, 
Yeah, um, I gave this a low rating. Um, connecting back to what Katie said, um, and and what one of the what the one of the presenters seemed to indicate that um, that the CPA support of this particular ask this is three million, right? Yeah, uh, they actually uh, adjusted it to reflect the amount without the uh, lights and without the comfort stage into 2.4, I believe is the approximate amount. Okay. Um, I was trying to think about this in relationship to um, when the Jones Library requested funds somewhat similarly um, in support of their expansion project for special collections. and. That was a very large ask, and um, this is a very large ask, and that was somewhat related to having uh, CPA support for this specific piece. And this seems somewhat similar, but it doesn't seem quite as targeted to me. And I was concerned when um, they expressed that that this level of funding would create. I guess a small, we, we didn't have a defined number, but a small um, break in terms of taxes, which would help promote a vote for the override. And that didn't seem like an appropriate CPA reasoning to me. That was, I think, my biggest objection. Thank you. Uh, Andy. Thanks, Sam. Uh, I would echo what Robin just said. Um, I uh, would also, I, I don't want to make like a political comment, but it's just like, I wish we just did this in 2016 was when money was cheap, right? And now we're at a point where we're facing a $100 million project. Um, this, um, I gave it a two. Um, I was leaning towards a one, actually. Um, I think that, um, yeah, the, 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 the prospect of using CPA dollars for this when we're going for a budget override, um, knowing that this would also um, have to, you know, this is something that we would, we would, uh, you know, whatever capitalize, we can offer this all in a single year anyway. Um, I, yeah, I, I've got, I've got some issues with how the, how this process was managed. I've got concerns around us using CPA money towards this, which could be going towards other, other urgent items because we as a town weren't able to like strike when we should have a few years ago. So um, anyhow, um, that said, uh, I, I, this is definitely one of my lower ranked ones. Um, thanks. Okay, thank you, Andy. So uh, I gave this project a three. Uh, I, it's a very large ask. It started off at 3 million and it's 2.4, which is close to two years worth of CPA funding. We get maybe 1.3, 1.4 million, it depends each year. Uh, so along with some of the other large projects, uh, the, the scope of it is such that it is basically, as asked, is, Couple years worth of total CPA funding for one project. I did. Uh, I do share Robin's thoughts that it's similar uh, in relation to the Jones Library request, in that it's a smaller component of a much larger project that is going to be determined based upon another entity. With the Jones Library, it was the uh, town council vote along with the petition, but essentially town council. With this one, it's going to be a debt override. Uh, in this one, the funding can be uh, and perhaps should be a component of that override. Uh, I did briefly enter in the dollar amount in the calculator that Sean uh, provided us to determine the tax rates based on property values differences. Uh, the numbers that I came up with for, I think it might have been a $450,000 house was like $20 or so a year. Uh, I don't know if it's perfect, but it didn't seem to be a large amount. Uh, Having said that, um, those fields are very widely utilized. Uh, I have coached soccer with the soccer there. They are constantly done and they are problematic. They are, they have water drainage issues. Uh, Matt, I'm sure you're familiar with that. I'm sure your team's played there occasionally. 
uh, all kinds of issues with the fields and the town does definitely have a field issue. Uh, and there certainly was a lot of support for this. Um, I wrestled with the concept of whether or not it makes sense for the committee to endorse a project overall. Um, in other words, endorse what might be coming in the um, override. Uh, uh, you know, 2016 is gone and we are in 2022. So there is a decision coming to the town next May. Um, I, I might support a significantly lower amount uh, as a component, uh, just to indicate that the CPA thinks that this is a uh, worthwhile project from a, uh, not from a, how it's been presented, although it was reasonably thorough, but rather from the outcome. That is to say, the town will definitely benefit from fields that are usable. Uh, so I wrestled with all these variables and the, the biggest two for me were the size of the ask because it's such a large component uh, and the fact that it, it, it does, um, it is a smaller amount of something that's gonna come before the town in the future. But I certainly wanna see good fields and uh, there were some points that were made well. That's why I gave it a three because when I, it's hard for me to uh, parse all of that out. Anyway, uh, I talk a lot. The next person on this, we've gone through the full list, haven't we? We started with no. you, right? We did not no, I haven't, uh, talk I haven't with you spoken yet. On this yet. Okay, no. very, very good. That's right. I was looking at Crocker Farm. Uh, Matt, go ahead, please. Uh, I gave this a three. My thoughts are similar to uh, what many people have said, uh, especially uh, Katie, Michelle, and Sam. Um, I think it would be very sad if the school project didn't go forward. I think it would be very sad if the fields, which are heavily used, are not uh, redeveloped as part of the school project. So from that point of view, I think it's an important project, but I, 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 I struggle with the CPA taking this on all by itself. Um, again, uh, if this was to be more like, say, the track project, where the CPA put in a component and the town put in a component and so on like that, um, then then I might be more amenable um, if, 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 if the town were to, to make some kind of suggestion like that. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, Tim. Okay, this is a, another project that, um, frankly, I am strongly opposed to this project. And let me see if I can outline my reasonings for that. Uh, number one, I agree, Sam, with the cost. Uh, I'm not at all sure this is a wise use of CPA funds. I think funding should go to the town and to the citizens in the override. I don't at all agree with the prospect of making a political decision to get the school project through by having CPA funds fund this. Uh, I think it's such a large amount that it would pardon the phrase, mortgage the future for any other CPA needs, and that the town and the school committee needs to uh, argue their case to the citizens in the override included in the total, which it is in the total. I think they need to make their case for that and not rely on the CPA to take a little piece out. Um, I'm also very concerned with the process. I don't all agree with the process of having private citizens make this application. Um, I don't understand why the school committee, the building committee, the town recreation department, all those components didn't at all be part of the process, part of this application. Now, I just don't understand that. I think it's inappropriate. I think it's an inappropriate process, and I cannot support it, uh, the application at all for that reason. Um, and I'm also very concerned. I, Somewhere in my notes, I indicated that there was an email from the executive director of the CPA Commission who said that we cannot award CPA funds to private citizens or private individuals, but the application application needs to come from the, from the school committee, the recreation committee, either as a sole applicant or a co-applicant. That was not done in this case. And I think, um, again, it's just not a project we should support. Now, as for the political question of whether the citizens would um, um, 
be more apt to vote for the override if the CAP, CPA handled some of this? Well, the total project cost is like 102 million. Uh, the fields cost is 2.4, which is about a 2% of the total. And I do feel that the school committee and school building committee, they need to make the argument to the citizens that is necessary not rely on the CPA. And again, I'm starting to repeat myself. I just think for us to tie this money up, even if we bond it, even if we go through go into debt, that's going to really tie our hands in terms of other future CPA needs in the community in the law in the near, in the near and the immediate future. So, uh, those are hopefully uh, I was able to express uh, some of my reasoning for that. Uh, and then, since I have the floor, I'm going to indicate that. Uh, I'm also concerned with the decision that the building committee made to choose the Fort River site. Uh, the Wildwood site was not approved. It was, uh, the Fort River site was initially opposed by the town manager, the town finance committee director, the town um, uh, facilities director and the building committee decided to go with Fort River knowing full well that the fields were problematic and it would raise the cost and for them now to come back and ask for the school committee I mean for the CPA to help bail them out I just don't agree with that at all so there's my <laughs> there are my comments all right thank you Tim we are uh, we are looking forward not in the rearview mirror, we have uh, decisions in front of us that we have to I make. I understand. And, uh, but thank you for your your clarity of communication. I did want to add one thing I had written down for myself to say, which was that my understanding is that the school committee did make a statement in support of the fields project for uh, uh, Fort River. Uh, I believe that they they did. Well, uh, that's it's not, not the same thing as being an applicant. No, I understand that. Uh, the same I'm, thing as I'm, being an applicant. I'm simply saying that okay. they made a statement in, in favor of it, and uh, I'm not arguing one way or the other. I'm just trying to communicate my understanding of the, the status. Uh, and the, the other, similar to this being uh, a proposal similar to the um, Jones Library CPA funds, in my mind, uh, another... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, one moment, please. There's another thought I had on this, which is uh, slipping me at the moment. I got distracted here. Um, I'm going to call on Michelle, and my thought will come back to me. Michelle, I see your hand is up. Uh, yeah, it was actually about that Jones Library funding. I just wanted to clarify, since I wasn't paying attention back then, CPA did approve the funds for the special collections. Okay, and that's what we're using is somewhat of an analogy to the... Um, Correct. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, Katie. Yeah, um, I just had a question about the process of um, tabling and talking about this. Can we ask applicants to adjust or revise, evolve their application um, if we table it and ask them to come back in January, February? Um, we, we probably should look at, we can, I believe. I don't think uh, we're prohibited, but I just I wanted to understand if that. I don't think we're prohibited. I think it's premature at this moment. No, for no, us I'm, to make, I'm not even specific about this. Cause I had a couple of other thoughts yeah. about other, I just wanted to understand if <laughs> what's possible and what's problematic about that. And mm -hmm. this may not be sure. an appropriate moment to ask that question, but I, before I think through my, you know, final recommendations, I wanted to better understand that. Uh, I believe we have the capacity to make communications, although we are discussing proposals in front of us. I see your hand, Sean, one moment. Uh, what I, the other comment I was going to make was that uh, there has been another case in which uh, residents have made a proposal for CPA, and that would be the pickleball courts in North Amherst that our committee approved last year. Uh, that was one that the applicants were residents, but there was a tacit recognition from town staff in the meeting uh, that they were backing it. Uh, again, though, uh, obviously there are many different opinions on this one. Um, I think we should discuss 
at a later point than right now uh, for the deliberation on these on how we may or may not uh, wish to fund or support. And um, But I am going to allow Sean Mangano to uh, speak. I see your hand is up, Sean. So Thanks. if you have Thanks, something Jim. related to what we're talking about relatively briefly, that would be fine. Yeah, just in regards to um, kind of going back and forth with applicants. I, I think it's a, it's a slippery slope to start telling people to come back and tweak their proposals. I think if you know, you're considering what's in front of you, you want to treat all the proposals fairly and give the consideration that, uh, you know, now during this time. And if you reject a proposal, you can always give reasons why you reject it, um, which would then inform them for the next time they want to submit a proposal. But I think it, you know, it does start to get a little fuzzy if we keep the process open all year long and are going back and forth with applicants. So my recommendation would be to consider the slate in front of you. And if you can't, uh, you know, accept a project now, you, you just don't accept it, but you can give the reasons why so that they, they know for the next cycle. Uh, thank you, Sean. And, and we do, uh, a, a comment came in regarding funding. Um, we do have the capacity as a committee to award uh, a lower dollar amount than what was requested, of course. Uh, we we can, and we actually could award a higher amount if we felt it was necessary, such as may or may not be the case with HPR, HPRs on historic reservations. Um, I see a hand up. Robin would like to get back to the list, but uh, go ahead, Robin. Yeah, just a um, quick question to clarify. Um, I'm sorry, I'm doing, just want to stay on task here with my screen. Uh, Sean's comment. My question is just, can we reject an application with feedback? And because we have funds in reserve, that applicant could come back and submit a new proposal within this, I don't wanna call it grant cycle because we'd already be awarding all the grant cycles, but you know, if we decided everything by January and somebody came back to us in January with a new proposal, we could consider that a new proposal if we have those reserve funds from FY23 is am I you know? an off cycle proposal would be something to my understanding that the committee would have to uh, request and or entertain it's not a standard applicants can't just say here's a proposal at that time please consider it but we could consider it in other words uh, it's not required for the committee to consider any off cycle proposals we have the capacity to, but okay. I'd like to talk about those things after we go through the remaining. Okay, okay uh, I just wanted to. The remaining uh, projects that were, there's only a few more here. Um, so thank you. Um, now, I believe I just spoke on the Fort River Fields project. No, Tim, you were the one who just finished speaking on it. And I believe you were the last one on that because we started with David. So the next project uh, where we're talking about our ratings, why we gave it the rating we did in the straw poll, is the War Memorial Bathhouse Preliminary Design. Uh, and the first person to speak on that one I have here as Katie. Yes. Um... I mean, I uh, I guess what I would say is I think our um, our public pools are really important to our community. It's extremely important um, that bathhouse could be utilized more than just for the pool um, in terms of sort of a comfort station for that area. Uh, that's a well used um, part of our you know recreation facilities at the high school, um, and I. I guess I rated it four because I thought um, it was important to have some design work done in advance, um, but I would not um, be promoting, providing the full amount in any, at all. Um, so that's okay. why I gave it a four. I'm uh, sorry, thanks. Katie, I, I didn't get that last, what you said, you wouldn't be the providing- The full amount. So you would not recommend the full amount? No. Okay. Your hand is still up, by the way, Robin. I'm sorry. I'm typing uh, and my hand is up and my speaker's on. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we have uh, Michelle. We're talking about the War Memorial Bathhouse preliminary design. 
Yeah, I think it's, um, I'm fully in support of both of the <clears throat> war memorial projects and updating them and keeping them functional. Um, I too would be interested in supporting this partially. Uh, thank you. Robin? Hold on. Um, I give it a five. Um, I live right next to the War Memorial Pool. I haven't been in there in a long time, but I definitely remember what it looked like when I when I was last there. And um, it seemed like a very an extremely valid and useful uh, and beneficial project. Um, I would say that I, I take into consideration people's comments about uh, lack of design and um, possibility of funding at a lower level. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, Sam. Um, I give this one a three. I like this project a lot, actually. So, so the three may not really reflect that. I, I would also say, given some of the momentum relative to the to the other project, relative, uh, uh, with the the track realignment and the uh, and the fields, um, you know, as that builds momentum, it gets me more excited about this project because I, I think you know this is part of a larger uh, recreational ecosystem that's forming around the high school. So. Um, do like this project, and you know I'd be inclined to round this up um, from three rather than keep it at three. If uh, once we okay. get down to kind of the hard deliberations. Thank you, Andy. Uh, so I'm next on this one. I gave it a three. Uh, I certainly am in favor of what can be done relating to the pools in the community fields area. Uh, very widely utilized, not just by, uh, even though it's adjacent to the school, not by the, just school folks, but by the entire community. Schools, very important, uh, limited availability. When they aren't online, it creates issues for those with kids. <laughs> uh, and when you're trying to get your kids to lessons or pools, uh, you're familiar, or certainly I am, uh, with the uh, issue of trying to find a slot. Uh, having said that, um, what I'm uncertain about is the town's capacity to actually consider such a project in their future capital plans. I realize it's premature for us to uh, make decisions based on that, but given the volume of requests in front of the town, not in front of our CPA committee, uh, all the different cap capital projects and the struggle to prioritize the existing ones, let alone new ones. My concern is if this gets approved and there's a great design that, well, guess what? It's not gonna happen. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, an ounce of prevention or measure, tw measure twice cut once can come into play where if you have a design, there can be further discussions. Uh, so I wrestled between those two juxtaposed uh, thoughts and gave it a three. I really like the idea of an improved uh, pool area, uh, well thought out and well designed for the long term as a part of that whole area. Will the town be able to pay for it down the road or not? I don't know. Maybe that's not our decision. Maybe our decision is whether or not we want to design in place. Um, and I'm also not certain if it has to get done this year as opposed to perhaps putting it off next year. Uncertain. So I like it, but we got a tight budget. That's why I gave it a three. Uh, next on the list here is Matt. Yeah, I rated this a four, which is a little higher than most of the other people, although I actually agree with uh, pretty much what people have been saying. I think the timing of doing a design here is uh, appropriate given the track project uh, passing town council um, recently. Um, so getting a design that takes all of that into account is, is timely. Um, I've been convinced that the pools are important, uh, uh, that they're heavily used. Um, I think I share sort of a concern probably, I think that some of the other committee members have that perhaps um, CPA should fund part of this and the town should fund a part of it. Um, to Sam's point just now, what I heard from Amy Rusecki about the actual construction was that she would hope to receive a state grant to largely support the, the, the construction, but those grants were not available for the design. Okay. Uh, thank you, Matt. Um, Tim. Yeah, I uh, 
pretty much agree with all the comments. Uh, and I'm going to speak to the War Memorial Pool <laughs> at the same time. I do think these are linked. And we got a letter today, I believe. I looked in my emails because uh, I had asked and we asked as a committee for the town rec department to prioritize the two projects. My understanding was if push come to shove, the prioritization would be the pool maintenance, which raises another question. And that is whether CPA funds are appropriate for the maintenance of the pool liner, the water leak, the repair of the ADA equipment and so on. And if they are, I would rate that a higher project than the bathhouse design that we might wait Till next year if we're tight on funds so uh, uh those would i rated let's see the uh how do i they rated a three for the bathhouse design again for those reasons that potentially would love to get it done now but maybe we could wait if we have tight on funds and i gave the war memorial pool a higher rating because i thought that was a more immediate need uh, thank you tim yep. uh david uh yes um I'm listening to the comments and looking over the proposals. It seems if though, and Tim has just mentioned some of this, that uh, someone need to prioritize uh, the projects that we've been talking about. A number of the projects are school slash recreational. And the question becomes, what can we fit, what can we fund, or uh, what can we recommend that we um, consider for another year or another two years? But it's uh, the project the, um, is needed, just like most of the others. But Will the resources we have cover that? Thank you, David. Um, the next project is the War Memorial Improvements. And Michelle, I have you as the first person to speak on that. Yeah, so <clears throat> I got a three on Andy's um, tool, but I would like to bump this one up um, after consideration. I think that I would give it four or five because um, of the oh. urgency and the the utility of it to the town and also just the public health and safety <clears throat> component of having a resource for people to take swimming lessons, which, you know, there's only then one other pool in the summer maybe to use because while Puffers is there, it's often not even safe to swim in for half the summer and it's extremely crowded. So I just think this is a pretty critical resource to the community. Thank you, Michelle. Robin? You're on mute, Robin. There we go. Unmuted. I give this a one, and I gave it a one because, uh, as I think my questions maybe indicated, um, the majority of the expenses for the pool liner, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, the majority of the expenses for the pool liner, which is stated in the proposal, needs to be repaired, I believe, every 10 years, and they'd reached that 10 year point. And um, I couldn't see a good reason why the town was asking for CPA funds for something that um, should be just a standard part of um, maintaining the pool. Um, and then the um, ADA portion, I was curious if they had considered community development block grant funds, which I believe can be used for um, some, some ADA projects. So um, it just seemed like this was a project that um, funds could and should come from elsewhere. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Andy? Gave it three. Uh, another project I like. Um, you know, similar to Robin, I'd, I'd love to see the town be able to chip in a little bit more here. Um, I, I don't have maybe the same concerns relative to 
this being used for maintenance, I think that you know this is I think that that this is an appropriate use of funds. But um, you know, I, I would I would be hopeful that uh, the town would be able to make a stronger commitment to to this important recreational need. But there's certainly urgency here. Um, so I you know again I something got a three, but uh, feel strongly might round that up once we get to the hardcore voting. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Andy. So I gave this a three. Uh, it's certainly heavily, heavily used. Our pools are definitely an in-demand resource, even if they're only used during the time periods where the weather's appropriate. Uh, go by there anytime in the summer and you just see tons of people. You have a hard time getting a parking space. Uh, so a, a lot of uh, utility value, I guess, is what I would say about it. I understand Robin's comments about the uh, uh, maintenance, if I understand correctly, there are three different aspects of the um, proposal that was made. There was the ADA chair, there was the lining, and then there was some uh, leaks or lack of a better term, uh, holes in it. Um, if it, if we were to provide less, I, I, I'd be, let me restate it. I'd be fully in support of the ADA uh, compliance or the, the access issue and the any leaks affiliated with it. I think those are immediate. The question I have related to the uh, lines, if I understood it correctly, uh, is this, does this need to get done at this time? That is to say, what would happen if they weren't done? If a new pool is going to occur in, let's say, five years, what would be the issue if the lines weren't done? Would that just be people swimming and Okay, so they see a blurred blue line that's not perfect. Am I talking about the right aspect of this? Uh, do, I am not. Okay, very good. So uh, I will stop my comment. I'll, I'll speak to the first two. I saw Matt shaking his head. And Tim, it looks like you have something to add further. So forgive my ignorance no, in no, terms of no. looking through so much. I must have missed that one. No, I go ahead, Tim. The only thing I was going to add was I did not think it was lines. I thought it was lining. Okay. okay. Um, and the reason for the repair and replacement now was because if you had to like rip a section of the lining out to do the the leak repairs, so this would make an appropriate time to put a new lining okay. in. That okay. was that was my only. I guess it's a semantics question. It could actually be interpreted <laughs> yeah. both ways. Had I looked at it thoroughly, I remember the problem uh, with the English language. Uh, it is. And I remember the scope of the estimate that we had on the Mill River project, which was uh, less than this, but it was $50,000 for, for uh, painting lines, if I recall, or at least painting the bottom of the pool. Um, so that's my question. My question related to this was, uh, I think the ADA thing should get done uh, at any point in time as soon as we could. That's my opinion. I don't think that's maintenance. I think that's something that uh, broke uh, and broke and needs to be uh, repaired. I don't think it's standard expected maintenance. Let me put it that way. Uh, but in terms of in terms of the relining the pool, that's a timing issue. How quickly are we going to get a new pool in there? And what would happen if it were not done? Uh, that's why I gave it a three. I'm speaking more than I need to at this point. So Matt, I see yeah. you, Andy and Dave. So I I I mean I would have put my hand also if I wasn't immediately to follow Sam. Um, so I gave this a five. That's probably a little higher than I probably should have rated it because I agree with many of the things the other people said. I do think this is a, a an urgent project and should be done to uh, soon to um, increase the reliability of the pool. Um, I would prefer, I mean, the ideal solution here would be well, the ideal solution would be the town have this in their capital budget. A secondary solution would be a match between the town and the CPA, perhaps, um, in my opinion. Um, to clear up a couple of things, so I'm also on the Recreation Committee and we have had additional discussion <laughs> about some of these things. So there's no consideration in the pool house site design of changing the location or scope of the pool. So um, the, 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 the pool house site design is just for the pool house and it's under all scenarios currently being considered, the pool would remain in the same place, same orientation, same size. 
So there's no thing of like, oh, we're going to fix the pool and then redesign and change the design of the pool. So from, from Amy, that's my understanding. And that's why I don't actually see these two projects tightly linked. Um, uh, the lining of the pool, as Sam uh, said, I think, I think people probably have an understanding. It's referring to the, I think the, the waterproofing basically, or the, the, the painting, but it's more than just paint, I think, of, of the interior of the pool, um, the surfacing of the interior of the pool. And my understanding from Amy is actually, if there wasn't a, uh, a leaking problem, they would be able to maintain the water in the pool throughout the year. And that would actually increase the lifetime of the lining. So it would not have to be relined, uh, have the lining replaced so, so, so often. Uh, so thank you. Some, some additional thoughts. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Andy, do you have a quick comment? I see your hand has been up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm also with Matt on the Red Commission and, and the point I was just going to make, I can't remember the, the number you might, Matt, but Amy had indicated the the gallons of leakage that happen on a daily basis. 2,000 um, gallons per day. It was, yeah, I was I thought she may have said even 10,000, but yeah, thousands of gallons a day currently leak in its current situation. So when the, when the pool is full. It's, right. 2,000 so, gallons a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we all kind of double took on the on the call, but that's you know maintaining with this liner has that kind of environmental impact as well of of throwing a lot of excess water and that would not be required with the the pool in place. I don't remember if she brought that up in in the CPAC presentation, which is why I wanted to. And that leaks into the town drainage system, I assume. I I, I believe so. So she's yeah. described it as a as a leak in the. The, you know, the, the way if you fill the pool and then you drain the I, pool, I understand. so it's a leak in that drain system. Thank, thank you, uh, Matt. David, I see your hands up, but you're right after Tim. So I'm going to call on Tim uh, just for expediency because you're going to have an opportunity to speak in a moment anyway. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Uh, no further comments to those I've made. Uh, there we go. <laughs> David. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I guess a question that I have. Uh, or as I look at this, um, my materials, we talk about the bathhouse preliminary design. Uh, why is, to me, it seemed to be incomplete. We we're talking about the pool improvement, but the uh, bathhouse, uh, we're also in the process of looking at a design for the bathhouse, which there's another major cost there to build or renovate uh, the bathhouse for the pool. When we look at this whole project in terms of the pool improvement, preliminary design, and just questionable for me. Uh, questionable in terms of the design? No, the not, not the design. Uh, the mere fact that um, I, I don't know, the design of the um, bathhouse probably need, for me, probably need to be a part of the first thing that happened as we look at the pool. Okay. Or both of them are done at the same time. Not the design. Once you get the design, what are we going to do? What can we afford to do? I understand. Um, thank you, David. Uh, Sean, I see your hand is up again. Yeah, I just want to clarify these two uh, proposals. Um, as Matt said, the pool is not moving. The pool, you know, we're not the, the design would not include a new pool. The pool will stay where it is. The pool project is just to repair the pool and and um and do the ADA work that was described. So the pool project is just focused on the pool. The bathhouse design, it'll focus on uh the new bath, a new bathhouse, uh, and, and then also the area around the pool and what type of um sort of additional things should go around the pool. So they, they do kind of work together. Um, and, you know, if, if there's a follow-up questions, we can bring them back to Amy, but I don't, I don't see these in conflict. They, they sort of go together. 
if I hear you correctly, Sean, to paraphrase, what you're saying is that, and this is similar to what either Andy or Matt said, I believe, or maybe it was him, the pool, if the, however the repairs get done to try and eliminate the leakage and the AD, uh, fix the ADA compliance, that pool is going to remain functioning in that state as is even after the design and the new bathhouse are completed, the pool's going nowhere. So Correct. once the pools gets fixed, for lack of a better term, it's going to be usable beyond the time that the new bathhouse comes into play. Correct. The new design okay. would design around the existing pool structure. And, and I understand. Part of it. Great. Uh, so thank you. Um, we've gone through the uh, initial uh, comments that we have um, related. Sam sorry yes i didn't get to oh <laughs> this, on this on this last one on the on the repair uh, i got distracted i'm sorry about that katie uh no, we stopped no. with david for some reason i thought he was the last one uh please uh katie uh proceed <laughs> thank you no i i just i had asked this question um when they were doing the presentations and really still don't have clarification um, and maybe one of you do, <laughs> but the, when I'm thinking about the repairs that need to be done, um, so first of all, I'm in faith, I think, as I said, the pools I think are really important to our community. Um, I do feel similarly to what Robin had said about the lining, um, but I think the drainage repair and the ADA lift do seem to me to be um, appropriate and need it. And so I guess the question is, if this funding isn't available until July 1, how can the drainage and pool relining and the ADA lift be ready for summer? It seems like there'll be a lot of construction and ripping out. And, and so I'm just wondering, does this then mean that there's no ADA lift for the summer of 2030? three or that there's going to be this 2000 gallons continuing is this more urgent so i just I, I don't really understand the timing issue and if somebody else maybe from the recreation committee or someone else could help me out um that would help me in my voting I, I let's see just another. let sean say yeah, yeah. my recollection from amy's um amy's report was that they would try to do this immediately after this pool season um, we can follow up with her and confirm. I thought they wanted to get the funding in place. So as soon as the pools close this year, they could do this work. Um, so you mean it closed so in I, 2023? I, I can, so I can, I can say additionally, um, so the, the ADA lift is $9,000 part of the proposal. And I'm not, they, they do need to replace that before they can open the pool. Right. So I'm not sure how they're going to fund that, but that will get funded one way or another, but it's only $9,000. Amy, Amy said that it's better to schedule things like relining the pool in the fall because you have a clear idea of timing. So her preference was actually to do that lining work in the fall rather than in the spring. Next fall. Correct. So okay. there would still be there would still be a leak yeah. for the next summer. And that that you know that's been ongoing for years. So, but but at least it would get fixed in the fall. Okay, and we haven't ever received this. I, I mean, I this is my third year, and I I don't think I've seen this request. But maybe I don't remember. Uh, my understanding is the leak has been getting progressively worse. Okay. okay. Thank uh, you. Anything else on that, uh, Katie? No, that's all right. Thank you. So. Uh, what I'm hearing from uh, the response is that the applicant prefers that it be in fiscal year 24 for timing and scheduling purposes. So uh, before you spoke and before I forgot you, Katie, I was going to say, let's take a slight break. Clearly, it was appropriate as I forgot to call on you. So um, I I'd like to take a three minute recess just so everybody can uh, get up, and move around a little bit and um, water or whatever and then come back uh sam sorry before we adjourn uh, or take a break can you 
then indicate what's next on the agenda. I don't happen to have that. What will we be just what will we discuss we'll, when we come back? We'll talk about that when we get back. Sorry. Oh, uh, thanks gonna... a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, but I mean, as you we're know, gonna start I'm, I'm looking at we're gonna start Kansas looking right now and, and I understand I'm, I'm debating gonna... whether to not participate in the second half. I just like to know what we're gonna talk about. Whether to not participate? Yeah. I mean I have I mean <laughs> well, uh, I, I've got. I, we're going to talk about budgeting, and we're going to talk about whether or not we wish to change ratings, and then we're going to start talking about individual projects. Uh, um, it's not. It's not a set. Uh, it's not a. Okay. It's well, not that, a, that's a set substantive stuff. So okay. Determination. That's it's great. it's it'll all be substantive. Uh, great. And uh, but we can proceed <clears throat> when we Perfect. return. Let's take a three minute break, please. Okay. Oh, uh, Sam, I'm going, Hello. where's my thing? I want to stop sharing so that um, Sean can share his screen. He will has, he, will he have this screen available to us? Well, um, we've, we've um, called some of, some of the applicants and some of the departments and have come up with a suggested funding plan just to show everybody before. Suggested funding for, plan for? For projects on the assumption that all projects are approved? Well, no, no. That's what he wants to share with everybody. Um, where, is Sean still here? Yep, he is. 
You mean so, you mean like a like a town match or something or something or or you mean a schedule? No, I think what's helpful for your conversation is to see how the funding could work. I think that helps weigh into your discussion. Um, and it's not to say it's the plan, it's to, I think, promote conversation among you all about how it could be funded. And then there's pieces of other funding that we would like to sort of, yeah, bring into the mix related to some of the projects as well. So again, I, I think- A combination. It, yeah, I think it'll be helpful at guiding your conversation because, you know, we don't want you to go down the road of rejecting a project because you think you can't afford it when you might be able to afford it. So I think seeing how it all fits together or one way for it to all fit together is helpful. Uh, how long do you think that'll that'll be? Um, I'd say it probably would take 10 minutes to do a quick, quick, quick go through. And then we also wanted to show you a part of that. We would show you the debt um, for the project, you know, for at least one of the projects that would likely be a borrowing, what that would look like. So you can decide that, whether that's something the committee would want to consider. On the assumption that the committee wishes to proceed with the projects. Right. Yeah, I assume that's part um, of the, part of your deliberation would be what what is the debt amount? Um, for the project? <laughs> Hmm. Did you hear anything back from the two uh, housing applications regarding any alterations yeah. in their requests? Uh, one of them we've spoken with, and that'll be part of uh, what we wanted to share with you. Uh, yeah, the, the, only, the only thought is we have yet to decide which ones we actually wish to proceed with and whether or not we wish to lower amounts regardless of what the funding might be. In other words, there might be a dollar amount that you might present, but we may wish as a committee to only support certain projects for a certain dollar amount regardless of borrowing is what I'm getting yeah, at. Yeah, no, I think again, what we would want to share is just one way to one way it could be done. Okay. And then, and then you guys, obviously it's your committee's uh, decision to change change it up, but we think this will be helpful for your consideration. Um, we think last year this proved to be helpful when you were deliberating over different projects. And um, again, it just gives you one way for it to all fit together. And then you can still say, we don't think a project should get that much and, and it can be adjusted from there. Or you can say, uh, you don't wanna move forward with a project at all and it can be adjusted. Yeah, because we, we certainly have to go through each project with that mindset, which ones we may or may not wish to present and how much borrowing we wish to do. But it it's fine uh, with the recognition that this is just a hypothetical that you're indicating in terms of general uh, mindsets for the committee about what things might be but we you know i don't want that to be the the final you know the committee needs to deliberate obviously because we have lots of projects to go through and some we may not want to go through at all but if you want to present that at this time as opposed to after we go through our next set of discussions where we would talk about our interests uh, that would be okay but, okay I mean, all right we, sure. we certainly appreciate and we need the support uh, of the town financial department uh, with all the uh, information that you provide us. So uh, feel free to proceed for 15 minutes uh, and let's wait till everyone, let's see who's back here. I think everyone's back now. Is everyone back? So uh, can everyone hear me? So if you just arrived, Sean has suggested that he provide an example of how projects might be funded if the committee were interested in doing so. This is not something that we're contemplating at this moment. This is just uh, trying to provide assistance for us in getting a handle on the juxtaposition of the asks versus the projects. We're still going to have to go through each one uh, to determine if we even want to support it. And even if it could be funded, do we want to fund a, a smaller amount? Uh, but uh, it, it was quite helpful, certainly last year, uh, when we were at that point, uh, slightly further ahead. Uh, so please uh, proceed, Sean, for you know, 15 minutes plus or so. Thank you, Sam. Um, and I think this year, one of the things that makes it even more difficult is you have a lot of projects and they all scored, you know, sort of in the same three. So far, yeah. Yeah. All right. Can you all see my screen? Uh, can you enlarge it a bit? Uh, let me see, I can probably enlarge it a little bit. Is that better? It's better for me. Uh, is this... anyone having difficulty seeing it? If anyone can't see it, just 
say something because I can't see in the, the list of people. Uh... Okay. Okay. All right. So, so, okay. So what's here is the original. I'm sorry. I have to interrupt for a second. I can't, I'm taking notes. So I've got my Zoom window. And this is a technical question because I can't see it. I've got my Zoom window minimized. I can't get to the control to maximize it because there's this note up about somebody has enabled closed captioning and it's covering the function where I actually expand my window. You can you can <laughs> X out that that message. There's an X there somewhere. Yeah, for the closed captioning thing, there's a there's an X to. It's I think that's also off screen. Under the view options, there's a little arrow. If you click down, it says exit full screen or something like that. There's might be an option there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. So just so everyone kind of knows where we are, this column here, Jay, was the um, the proposal as it is over here in the yellow is sort of the initial, you know, one recommended way that could be considered. Um, so for Town of Amherst administration, we've left that alone. Uh, for affordable housing trust development, we dropped that down to 250 from 500. And the reason why is because there are two really large housing projects uh, being considered. Um, and this 250 essentially equals what Ball Lane said in their proposal that they would be going to the affordable housing trust uh, as a request. Um, and then outside of that, the affordable housing trust has about $600,000 in, uh, in their account currently. Um, so it felt like given the magnitude of affordable housing requests we had this year that this seemed like a, a reasonable way to go. Uh, Ball Lane proposing the full amount that project hasn't received any funding from the town in the past or any you know, in-kind uh, exchanges in the past. And that's a home ownership program, which is something that is a priority for the town. Uh, East Street School in Belchertown Road, they had a large $1.8 million request. Uh, we're proposing 400,000 and then advising uh, that uh, Wayfinders comes back and works with the town on our ARPA funding that we've allocated for affordable housing. And we also have existing CPA funds for affordable housing. Um, and we've reached out to them on this and they seem amenable to that approach, at least initially is sort of a smaller uh, award from the CPA committee and then working with the town and Dave Zomek and the town manager on accessing other funds that might be available. Uh, rental subsidy program phase two, uh, Proposing just one year of funding, given the, again, the number of requests that have come in, um, just doing the first year and then uh, additional years could be requested in the future. Um, moving, keeping the full amount for the, the paintings, full amount for the Dickinson farmhouse roof renovation, uh, reducing the historic barn and outbuilding assessment program down to 10,000 from 15, but keeping the project in there. Uh, removing the preservation restrictions. I think that was the general takeaway is that uh, that shouldn't be part of this. So we've taken that out. Uh, based on your conversation today, um, we've, I've taken out the Zion Church, but what we would do is we would leave that in the reserve so that if, uh, based on what you said earlier, if you wanted to come back and consider that at a later time as a smaller project, there would still be a reserve to do that. Uh, South Congregational Church Steeple, the, the full project. Uh, what we're proposing for conservation area improvements, the trails, is uh, two things. So reducing it down to 70,000. And uh, we actually uh, uh, recently realized that we have a uh, prior CPA project for Kendrick Park that didn't fully expend all of its funds that we can repurpose for another uh, sort of similar type project, a recreation project. So the amount that we have from that project left over is 70,000. So what we propose is reduce this down to 70,000 and use that other funding source to fund it. Um, so that'll show up in a new sort of a new summary of your funding sources. Hey, Sean, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. Can you clarify that? So the money was allocated towards one project and we're saying we can use it. Yeah, so, for, so, so it was allocated for Kendrick. We borrowed for it. We, it, it turned out that it actually came in less expensive than what we were anticipating. And so we can repurpose that borrowing for something else that, and we want it to be in the same category as the Kendrick Park project. And so we can repurpose it for the, the trails here. Is it repurposed so or does it just go back into the pot basically and then we can it's more of a it because it was a borrowing it really has to be repurposed right. uh, for for another project if it if it was just unexpended it would be different it would just close out into the pot repurpose for recreation yes it's got to be repurposed we want to repurpose it for a like uh purpose a like you know how much there was seventy thousand. Uh, remaining so, so from I, Kendrick I park remaining from the original project at Kendrick Park, yes. Got it. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that 70,000 is not coming out of this year's budget. No, no, the, the, again, you'll see this as a new funding source to increase the amount of funds that you had yeah, previously, right. but again, it can only be used for a like project. Right. Um, Crocker Farm Elementary School, I've spoken with um, uh, officials at the school district and they are okay pulling this project back this year, um, given the, some of the issues you've all identified with the design work not being done yet um, and, and waiting until the following year to request those funds. Uh, Fort River Community Recreational Fields, that's just not, I'll show you what the debt looks like. It wouldn't come out of this current year's um, request of funds, so it's shown here as a zero. Um, but I'll show you what the debt would look like if you were to approve the debt. Um, and then for the town, I'd say the priorities from the town projects are the two War Memorial uh, submissions as opposed to the Crocker Farm Elementary project because these two are more urgent in our eyes um, at moving those pro that moving that area of town forward in terms of its development. So when you add all of that together, that gives you uh, 2.7, including the debt. And then I'm going to go over here real quick. So, um, so starting with uh, estimated funds available for FY24, we're at 2.4 roughly, um, less the debt service for FY24, which is 443,460 bringing in that new 70,000 that I just uh, described from Kendrick Park, we would propose using 271,000 of the prior year reserve um, to fund these projects for next year. And that would then give you sort of a total of 2.2 million um, for projects. And that would still leave 261,000 in the reserve uh, that could be used for those other projects like the, the Zion Church. Um, and that would be in balance. And then let me just show you one more thing before you go, before I turn it back. So this is the updated um, debt schedule for CPA. I'll just go over and show you the project. So we've got the housing authority that went off in 22, uh, Rock Farm that's going off uh, in 23, or sorry, in 24, uh, Ann Whalen's going off in 24. Rolling Green is a large one that is gonna be going off in FY25. Um, Groff Park will go off in 24. The Kendrick Park borrowing that we described will be going off in 26. Those are all currently bonded in permanent financing, so the debt schedules are fixed. Uh, we have a number of bands with uh, bond anticipation notes, which are sort of year-to-year short-term financings. Um, one for Belchertown Road, and one for Valley CDC. These will probably be rolled into a bond potentially um, the next time we go out for a bond, they'll move to permanent financing. And then the ones that have been approved but haven't been uh, borrowed for yet because of the timing and, and what, you know, confirming the project will move forward is the Jones Library project. Um, currently estimating that debt comes on around FY25. Again, that could move forward, uh, move back a year potentially depending on the time of that project. Um, and then the track and field project at the high school, I've got that as FY25. Again, depending on the timing, that could move forward or back. Um, so right now for FY24, your total debt number is 443,460. For FY25, with the two projected uh, projects, if, those, if the debt moves forward as we uh, are anticipating right now, it would be 520. And for FY26, it would go back down to 425. And now what we wanna show you is if you were to approve the Fort River project, um, I thought it was 2.2, but maybe I was off by uh, 0.2 on that, but we modeled what the debt would look like at 2.2 million um, borrowed over 10 years with, uh, with a 4% interest rate. So we, the debt we're having- 4%. Yeah, a 4% long-term rate. Is that the current rate? Uh, for our long-term bonds, that's what they're, uh, when we get reports from our financial advisor. I saw some recent upticks in the, the Yeah, so, so short-term rates are much higher than long-term rates right now. Short-term rates are um, substantially higher. Long-term rates, at least the last report I had, were still in that 4% range. Uh, so projecting that out, this is one way to do the debt. This is a, a level principal where you pay the same amount of principal every year. So it starts out a little bit higher and then winds down each year as you pay off more of the project. Um, the first year debt, again, this could, it could be FY26. It's possible that debt maybe is FY27. So this could get pushed back a year. Um, but that would bring your total debt number for, <laughs> for FY26 if this was approved and move forward according to the schedule um, to 733. 
and then to 676 in the following year. What you're showing right now, Sean, if I understand correctly, would be the impact of fully funding the two point two million dollars for the fields. Is that correct? Yeah. If you were to if you were to say we wanted that project, the only way you can really do it is to borrow for it. Um, Under this scenario, really, I mean, you don't have enough money to. Uh, well, I, I suppose you could reject every other project, but generally speaking, it, the only way to do it would be to borrow for it. Okay. Uh, I have a a question for you. Um, Aside from the um, Port River project that you just showed, uh, on the go back to where you were just before with that number in red down below the 2.5. Nope, the previous, yes, scroll down. Okay, uh, you're saying this includes the impact of what your town hypothesis would be. Um, we, my understanding is we have 1.9 million in our current fiscal year 24 budget. And we have some reserves. Um, what is, can you go over what you're showing us right now again? Yeah, so the 1.9 million that you have is this estimated funds available less the debt service. Um, so that comes down to 1.9 million. Um, I see, okay. And then what we're showing is adding in the 70,000 using 271,000 of uh, the prior year reserve. Right. You know, in order to fund 2.2 .2 million roughly of new projects, not including the debt, which would equal, that would equal these projects. Can you go back to what you were just showing though again with that? Yep. 2.23, cause it's, it's relevant down lower yep. there. Yeah. So again, uh, we have 1.9 and you're saying that that 1.9 million is derived from the two blocks that you're highlighting now, the yep. debt service and the other. You're suggesting that under this hypo hypothetical uh, uh, set of projects, we'd have an increase of seventy thousand from the Kendrick Park, which might exist anyway, uh, and taking two seventy one thousand from reserves from uh, the twenty twenty three to allocate them for twenty twenty four, leaves a balance of two point two million that would be what we would have available. In other words, so one point nine million plus two hundred seventy one thousand plus seventy thousand. We yep. have enough to fund 2.253. And can you now go back to what your recommended options are, the hypothetical, and what's the total of that exclusive of the debt service? So the total of that. The, the future bonding, that is to say. Yeah, the total of that is uh, the 2.2. I see. So you're yep. suggesting that what you're displaying right now matches what would be available were we to allocate 271000 from the cash reserves towards fiscal 24. And if we were to also include the 70,000, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question for you, if it's okay, Sean. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'm curious, uh, what jumped out of me out on to, to me on this uh, at first is the reduction from 1.8 million to 400,000 in the East Street School and Belchtown Road affordable housing project uh, certainly it was a project that scored high in terms of interest from the committee. Uh, did Are you indicating that the um, applicants have understood uh, or confirmed that this might be a viable option for them? <laughs> yeah, um, Dave, are you? Dave Z, are you there? I can't see who's uh, in the room, but I can. Um, Dave might be best to speak to it. Yeah, if it's okay with you, Sam. It, it's okay. Here. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I do see in the attendees that that uh, Jamie Gruber is here from Wayfinders, um, but I did speak with one of her colleagues at Wayfinders, and yeah, I I, I was working with Sonia and Sean on on the plan or the 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 ideas that have been just pre pre presented to you, and I just want to make it clear that um, yeah, so we we have had a conversation with with Wayfinders. This is a project that you know the town is partnering on. As as you all know, we are um, going to land lease uh, the land at East Street School and Belch the land we bought at Belchtown Road. And and I really just want to also say, but before I talk specifically about that, that you know both of these projects, both the Valley CDC project and and the Wayfinders projects, are are ones that the town should support. They're bringing different kinds of affordable housing. I think we all recognize that. They're both. Uh, uh, you know, extremely positive projects for the community. Uh, Wayfinders, I think, um, if all goes well, will probably be in the order of 70 new units 
uh, in town. So it's a great project. So what, what I talked about today with staff at Wayfinders was the town supporting them at the $1 million um, uh, amount. And as Sean indicated, we if if you move forward, uh, you know, in the 400 uh, range, we would um, bring together ARPA funds or other CPA, previously approved CPA funds and, and bring Wayfinders to a million dollars. Now, having said that, it was clear to me that staff at Way Wayfinders said there may be a need in the future to come back. That's a, a many year project. The, the development of that project and the funding of it will take millions of dollars and they may need to come back to the town. And part of that is simply based on the climate, the building climate we're, we're all working in, living in, which is you know um, escalating costs in labor, in uh, borrowing and in uh, materials. So they're comfortable. There was a comfort level at a million dollars, but with the caveat that they might come back next year or the year after if they can't fund the whole project uh, through other federal and state uh, sources. Uh, thank you, Dave. I do see your hand, Andy. I have one question prior to calling on you. Uh, so, Dave, thank you for communicating uh, how you arrived at this. And just and, for, yes. Since there is a representative of Wayfinders, I want to make sure, you know, if if you need more information, you know, um, perhaps Jamie would comment, but that is um, the discussion yep. I had with, with Wayfinders staff today. Okay. Uh, if I hear correctly, in paraphrasing what you said, uh, the proposal asked was for 1.8 million. You had communications in light of the partnership between the town and Wayfinders that perhaps the town could uh, come in with support of $1 million, uh, which seemed to be uh, amenable to both parties. Uh, and you're further suggesting that that $1 million might be arrived at with 400,000 from CPA funds and 600,000 from funds that are available to the town via another mechanism, which might be ARPA funds. But if it were not ARPA funds, uh, if I heard you correctly, you're saying it would come from the trust. Is that right? Actually, no. The, the, no okay, the town, you said other housing funds. The town has previously authorized CPA funds for affordable housing. Okay. So we would come to the table with one of those two sources or a combination of the two to bring that total support uh, for Wayfinders project okay. to $1 million. And that, that other previously awarded housing funding has been CPA funded, awarded for other projects. So are you suggesting that it would be a repurposing for lack of a better term? No, it's not. It hasn't been awarded or or allocated to any other project. This is last year's. Funding. It was a broad project, Sam, last year. Yeah. Um, so it was it was generally. Or, or what we provided for the, when you first came to us, Dave, with the $800,000 request a few years ago? Is that what you're- I, I actually don't recall what the original uh, proposal was. I'll take was, your word for it, what's available. It was $500,000. $500, okay. So, I, so that, I understand. That money is available for us to use to support the Wayfinders project. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dave. Sorry to ask such direct grilling questions, but I think it's uh, certainly helpful to me. Um, and um, Andy, I saw that your hand is up. Uh, I'd like to uh, call on you. Thanks, Sam. Um, Sean, a uh, great, great uh, summary here. This helps a lot. I remember in years past, you know, we come in and it's like, what are we going to do? And then you present this and and there's, there's a path. So I uh, appreciate that. Uh, my question, actually, I'm glad that Dave's on. I, I think I may know the answer to this and I'm kind of behind in, in the bulletin, but the, the recent VFW purchase, is that impacted by uh, you know past CPA funding? Is that ARPA? I, I just, I'm not up to speed. Will anything we do here have impact on the VFW purchase? Really not, not at all. Um, we are going to use ARPA funds for that purchase. Paul Bachelman, uh, with the authority he has to, to allocate ARPA funds, allocated $1 million to um, um, homelessness and um, uh, the creation of supportive, permanent supportive housing. So we're using ARPA funds to purchase the VFW, and then we'll use some of the remaining funds in that $1 million account for pre-development work. We'll demo the building with it, uh, et cetera. So, 
anything you do here is really not impacting the progress or the forward forward motion on that. Thanks. Thanks, Dave and Andy. Uh, Tim. Uh, yes, uh, this is a question for Sean. Your second item, the uh, trust, your suggestion is 250, and that is to cover the request in the Wayfinders project. That's All they're in. requesting 250 from the trust, and you're suggesting CPA fund 250 or allocate 250 for the trust, and that's the source of the funds. Basically. Yeah, so uh, you know it was the Ball Lane, um, not the Wayfinders, but the Ball Lane project. Oh, Ball Lane. Excuse me. Yeah, okay. If you look in their proposal, they they have a request to CPA for seven fifty, and and another request to the Housing Trust for two fifty. Okay. So, um, so essentially, what this would do would be to allow that that Ball Lane project to move forward, um, and not have to take it out of the Housing Trust existing balance. You'd be basically awarding the funds to the Housing yeah. Trust in order to to award it. And that it, it would still be up to the housing trust whether or not to, to do that, though. It would still be their decision. And my recollection is the existing balance is roughly 600000 Correct. So that would maintain the 600000 and the and uh, Ball Lane wouldn't dip into that. We would fund, we would allocate 250. Okay, I understand. Correct. It would, yeah, I'd still leave them with a balance to be able to right. um, you know, respond to something that comes up in the future. I understand. Okay, thanks. So, um, Thank you, Tim and Sean. So if I look at this correctly, uh, Sean, um, and thank you for putting this together and for um, uh, discussing options. Uh, can you go to the top again? Um, what I'm seeing is the hypothetical changes that exist here. Uh, there's a few projects, but not all that are impacted under this scenario. Under this scenario, you're referencing a reduction in the affordable housing trust amount to 250,000. You're referencing a reduction in the E Street School down to 400,000. You're referencing a reduction in the rental subsidy program from 205 to 200,000, excuse me, 205,000 to 68,000. In other words, three years to one year. You're referencing a reduction in the historic barn and outbuilding from 15 to 10. You're referencing the uh, uh, not to consider the preparation of housing restrictions. Uh, you're referencing to consider at a later point in time, the Zion Church, uh, a reduction from 100,000 to 70,000 in the conservation area improvements and a, uh, a reduction in totality or not approval for both the Crocker Farm and the Fort River projects, unless there's a desire for the committee to go to bonding for the Fort River community fields projects. Is that a correct in terms of- I think of everything you said was 100% correct. I'm not, we are not wait, uh, saying yes or no on the Fort River. I understand. Yeah, yeah. we just wanted, we just figured that if you are going to do it, okay. it would be a borrowing. Yeah. All right, well, great. Uh, certainly uh, it's very helpful uh, for me and I assume for the committee members to understand that there's the possibility of a reduced amount by apparently $1.4 million for the uh, East Street and Belchtown Road project, even though uh, that could go forward under what you're considering, uh, under what we're considering. Um, so this is interesting. Um, I'd like to, can we go back, Sonia, to the uh, chart that you had previously? Sure. No, yeah. Is that can that be enlarged? No, that's not enlarging it. Is that the largest it can be? That's a little oh. bit better. Okay. So uh committee members, I, I assume you all heard this. Uh I'm not proposing at this point in time that we consider the uh, slate of recommendations that uh, Sean provided here in totality. Uh, 
uh, but rather that we consider the projects and the, you know the value of the recommendations or the options that he's presented to us. Um, slight dilemma in terms of how we might proceed. I guess uh, a couple things come to mind. Um, the ratings that we provided there in our straw poll are just that they were hypothetical ratings. They're not going to be what we vote. But I did indicate that individuals would have the opportunity to alter them. Um, and so I'd like, yes, Matt. I'm wondering if it would be worthwhile just getting each member's like two sentence reaction to Sean's sort of um, outline of of making this sort of from completely unmanageable and outside of the budget to something that's a little bit more realistic. Um, well, we're still going to need to communicate on the individual projects. Uh, do the committee members think that they could keep their comments to two sentences? <laughs> uh, does let, let me put it this way. Does any committee member have a desire to have a two sentence comment on Sean's presentation? I assume you do, Matt. Yes, uh, I'd like to get to get like a uh, well, I'd like to get a, a sort of a straw poll type of response from the committee if, if they can. Well, for right now, we're asking you if you have a comment on uh, Oh, for, for uh, my, what, just just for me, um, for correct. me, uh, I think that it takes uh, the the proposals that we 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 received and the 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 discussion and and puts it in a framework that it's it's a little bit more manageable or a lot more manageable yeah. and and uh, uh, we could talk about differences from like it variations from Sean's proposal. Yeah. might be a, a, a faster discussion than 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 um reviewing everything sure. from the that, beginning. That, that's uh, that's something that makes sense yes katie oh i just wanted to agree with matt on i i like i i really appreciate the illustration that was given to us um and it's a great straw man you know for us to then have the discussion about it's like a it's a great tool um to your point um, though, Sam, you know, it, we have to go through each one, but yes. I like the idea of going through it with the, with talking about funding and okay. sort of, is it more, is it less, is it different than what's been um, proposed as an, as an illustration? Uh, Andy? Agree with uh, Katie and Matt, it's a path. Um, and I think it's a more pragmatic and, and realistic one. Let's, let's start from what we can do and and then kind of tweak the edges. Also, I, I just appreciate that this brings in some additional conversations that you know we weren't privy to relative to what could be pushed, um, other other means of addressing this. So uh, I'm all in favor. I think it's a great um, I think it's a great first pass, and would love to just work work from this. Additional comments from anyone? Um, yep. Tim, who's that? I can't Tim. see. You. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, just quickly, uh, Sean, I don't quite understand the reserves. Is My understanding is that you're suggesting we use some of the reserves, but for fiscal 24, you're not suggesting we use some of the reserves for fiscal 23? Yeah, so what the, the previous plan showed was using some of the reserves to support FY24 projects, but that okay. would but not all of it. It would leave roughly Understood. half as, as reserved for this year that you could use for right. the other. So you're suggesting to using roughly half in fiscal 24 and using zero in fiscal 23, at least in your proposal. For right now, yeah, because okay. not, not deliberating on FY23 projects at this time. Okay. Does anyone else have uh, further, any, any comments related to uh, what Sean provided? Uh, question, uh, whether we put Sean's numbers in this chart here or the one that he had there, would it make any difference? Um, I, we don't necessarily need to see our uh, ratings, but there is benefit in seeing them. How hard is it to just do exactly what is somebody's entering in right now? I think that's a good way of approaching this. So that 
takes what Son suggested, everything except for the uh, proposed bonding, uh, the debt service for the um, uh, Parker Farm. And this will allow us to continue to converse uh, while looking at what we've talked about so far. So I think uh, the uh, East Street, was the East Street 400,000, not 1,400,000? It was. Oops. We'll just wait a minute here while these get entered. What am I missing? Uh, you're missing the Ball Lane Community Homes. Or are you just adding the variance? You're just adding those that changed? Yeah. I, I see. Um, yeah, but, but then the is the <laughs> you need to put a zero in those that were potentially zero. Uh, but I'm plugging them all in. Okay. Okay. Just give me a sec. Oh, zero. Can you actually put a zero on them or not? I guess it doesn't matter. People can, people can see that. Um, and maybe an asterisk by the Crocker Farm, uh, by the uh, Fort Rivers Fields, because you've read. So, um, I, I guess what makes sense here is for us to actually talk about the uh, concept of the fact that we are we have potentially one point four million dollars reduced on the East Street School Program, two hundred fifty thousand on the Affordable Housing Trust, uh, and really the variance, the ones that have been removed. Um, my comments as I as I look at these is I think we need to talk about those that have been changed and whether or not there are any that people uh, are certain they wish to support or not support. Um, I'd like for us to just go down the list. I think that's the way to do it. Uh, this is not a vote. This is us talking about how we feel about the projects in light of what we've heard and what we've talked about and whether anyone wants to change. I know it's not the quickest process, uh, but there's a $25,000 in administration. Do individuals have any opinions on that? That is to say, do they have opinions in terms of it uh, changing? Sam, do you want to just go quickly by roll call? I mean, with, you know, uh, that, I mean, it, it, I mean it's, it's asking, not a, are we are we asking if we want to change our straw poll votes? I mean, you know, because a we didn't of, have any for the administrative one. Right, right. But I mean, that's essentially the question. I mean, I would be changing my votes on a number of these. I don't really yeah. need to comment on it. That would be fine. We can go through it. Uh, I'm curious what everyone thinks, not in terms of straw poll, in terms of the administrative 2,500, a yes or a no. It's not it's not a vote. Uh, uh, thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, uh, I am in favor of 25,000. I'm in of that slate. We aren't voting on it. We're just considering it. Um, so you could put a what would be an alternative next to a Y uh, uh, in support? Uh, plus, you can put a plus for me uh, on the uh, administrator for 25,000 or even a Y, I guess. Um, Michelle, what do you think about it? So um, I see that the um, historical um, restrictions have been taken out. Um, is that assumed that it's going to go into administration and is, is that something it is not it is something that we would have to actually add to the projects to my understanding and that's something I would be in favor of I'd be in favor of altering the uh, historic preservation projects to add enough to cover the historic preservation uh, fees because we heard from the town uh, from uh, coalition and my understanding is that the historic preservation amounts can be awarded in the current time frame but not retroactively so the current historic preservations we could supplement them with this unless the town had another means of paying for them we could supplement them with the, the funds specifically for them but not admin correct 
And that applies to the previous ones that are sort of pending or not? Previous ones happened. we're not discussing in this moment. Okay. Um, do you have an opinion on the administrative budget? 2,500, 25,000? Um, not further than that. So thank you for answering okay. the question. Uh, uh, Robin, what do you think about the uh, administrative budget, 25,000? Fine. Uh, Andy? I'm fine with it. I'm, I'm wondering also just procedurally, and if, if this is just going to be, you know, um, 50 yeses, maybe we just be good if we have an issue with it instead. Uh, well, this is brand new. We have no, um, we have. I know, no, but if we're going line, if we're going line item here, the other ones it'll be it, it'll be changes by person as opposed to uh, by line item. Fair enough. Thanks. I'm comfortable with this. Okay, so uh, you're comfortable with the 25. Is anyone, well, let's go through the list. I'm comfortable with the 25,000. Uh, Matt? No opinion. No opinion. Tim? I uh, hate to ask this. Remind me, somebody, what those funds would go to? What is administration? Sonia, do you want to jump in? If administration, not, I can do it. In a, oh, sorry. We use it to pay our dues to the coalition, okay. and we use it to for the um, advertisements for the open hearing. The it was increased a couple of years ago because we are trying to put together money to do signage for CPA. You know this pro you, this is what your CPA dollars paid for or plaques on buildings or signage at um, trailheads and stuff like that. So we're trying to build that up. Okay, yeah, that, that's fine with me. Then thank you. I've, I've forgotten. Uh, David, any comment on the administrative fee? Not hearing. You're on mute, David. Can you hear us? I didn't see David uh, signed back in. I can see him there. Oh. Uh, David uh, Williams, do you have any comment oh, on the twenty-five thousand? Fine, okay. Fine. Uh, Katie, okay. Yep, I'm fine. Okay, and uh, Michelle, you said fine, I believe. Is that correct? All right. So there's no issues with that. Um, I'm going to go person by person, even though we aren't required to go by our straw polls to see if anyone wishes to change their uh, straw poll ratings based upon the conversations that they heard previously. Uh, this is uh, uh, not based upon the, uh, do we want to base, I don't want to predetermine the budgets yet. So uh, does anyone want to change their straw polls based upon what they heard previously from the other committee members? Um, some people said during our discussions that they were comfortable cha making changes. Uh, this was 10 minutes ago. So I would raise my war memorial pool design by from a three to a four. And I would raise my war memorial improvements from a three to a four. So I'll start. Uh, those are the two changes that I would consider based on what I heard from our fellow committee members prior to Sean's discussion. Uh, I'm going to go across the list if anyone has any ratings that they wish to change prior to what Sean's displaying. This is based on what we heard earlier. Uh, Michelle. Um, I'd like to change War Memorial Pool or yeah, Pool to four and Fort River Rec Fields to a three. Pool improvements or yeah, pool. Four. The pool. And what else? The Fort River and field to a three. Okay, do you get the um, Robin? Do you have any that you wanted to change based upon the uh, initial comments from committee members? Um, I, I don't think so. It's a little hard for me to no. think it through, but I think I can't hear you. Sorry, I, th I think I'm fine. Okay, Andy. Yeah, I'll just address mine in the in the phone. I'm good with this. There's none here. Okay. Uh, I've already done mine. Matt, did you have any you wanted to change based upon the general discussion? Um, uh, I'm not sure that 
the purpose of changing them. If you um, if you have a, a change in influence based on what you heard before we start talking about the dollar amounts that are in front of us, two step process. Um, not 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 really. Okay, Tim. No, no change. Okay, uh, David. No changes. Okay, uh, Katie. Yeah. I can't hear you. None for me. Okay. So um, now we have uh, the ability to talk about each project with potential dollar amounts. Uh, there's two steps. One is, I guess, th this is kind of hard. Uh, there are some projects that are being uh, considered for lack of inclusion. And I think we need to go eat through each one. Um, maybe we can come up with some for which we're in agreement first. Um, and I'm going to look at the projects for which there are, there seems to be consensus to, uh, as we go through this, does this make sense for everyone? In other words, does this process of identifying those that we seem to be agreed upon and supporting a dollar amount make sense? And then, uh, we can eliminate and talk about the ones that we are, have further questions on. Yes, Robin. Um, so your question is, does it make sense? I'm a little confused. It would seem to me that I would change a number of my votes based on dollar amounts. Correct. And if that was the case um, for other members of the committee, that some of the projects might go into the dark green area, which would be great. So, mm -hmm. um, Right. And so I'm trying to identify those that we might already agree on regardless, uh, in other words, without changing the dollar amount, taking the dollar amount as it sits, is there consensus on them? Are there some that we all agree uh, we might want to support? For example, uh, the his, the uh, conservation of five paintings by Mabel Loomis Todd for 16,450. Does Is there anyone who would not want to support that in any scenario? Doesn't seem to be anyone. Yes, Andy. Uh, I was just because I, 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 all of the projects where the uh, Sean's proposal matches the um, the applicant's proposal, I am in favor. Okay. Um, Katie, you had your hand up. Yeah, I Sam. I I don't know if this is helpful at all, but it. I hear what you're trying to do, which is prioritize. And if there's anything that we agree on, but for me, it's maybe just me, but I just, I would find it easy just to go through and top, just top one by down. one and, and then just okay. say, does, I'm, I'm sorry. Go top down. In other words, start at the top and go through. Well, all and just say, is anyone is, if anyone's in disagreement with what's proposed, then we can have a, you know, people could speak up and we can have a conversation and it might change people's views you okay. know or whatever but project by project yeah that that okay and then if no one has a disagreement then we can we know then okay. that we have consensus or I, i'm hearing uh i'm seeing a couple thumbs up in the audience that's a fine way to uh proceed as well um so uh the question is do we start from the top or from the bottom uh the big one is going to be the Fort River Fields, of course. So let's start from the top. Um, we have the Affordable Housing Trust consideration of two hundred and fifty thousand instead of five hundred thousand. Uh, is there anyone who would want to support a lower or higher amount than that, if at all, or not support it at all? Uh, I guess we can go through the list, Michelle. I guess I'm just thinking about this a little differently now because it's um, solely now for Fall Lane, and so it's not a fund that funds other potential needs for the for the trust. So my consideration of it is sort of tied into Fall Lane. Um, so I'm interested mm -hmm. to hear what other people say about it because to me those numbers are going to interact. It's actually, yeah, okay. Uh, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to clarify. My rationale was all lane, but if you were to the trust, it's you know it's up to them to determine how to okay. spend. Yeah, um, it's, it's not guaranteed for ball lane. So, um, Robin, do you have a comment on this affordable uh, housing trust? I'm highly in favor of it. Two hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Uh, 
Andy. In favor, 50. Uh, Katie, I see your hand is up, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, were you gonna go? I, I, I I'm going sequentially, I but I see your hand. No, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I will stand okay. down. <laughs> uh, I would support a lower amount on this um, with the potential for using some in a different project, given that there's an existing balance of 600,000 in the affordable trust. Uh, I would consider these funds for some that may currently have uh, no dollars on them. Uh, that's my thought. Uh, uh, Matt. I am agreeable to 250,000. I would also be agreeable to a lower amount. Okay. Uh, Tim. No, I, I feel fine with that. Okay. Uh, David. I'm fine with that and will not agree with a lower amount. Okay. Uh, Katie? Uh, ditto. I'm okay. okay. Um, the Ball Lane Community Homes at $750,000. Um, uh, that aligns with the request. Does anyone have uh, comments in terms of if that dollar amount makes sense for them and their interest in it? Uh, Michelle, uh, if I go this way, Michelle, you'll be the first one every time. Is that problematic for you? Would you rather we stagger it or are you okay going first? I actually have to grab my cord. So Okay, so we'll, start, we'll go to Robin. We'll do it the way we did before. Uh, Robin. I'm in favor of this amount. Okay, uh, Andy. In favor of this amount. Okay. Uh, this is another one where I'd contemplate a slightly lower amount, although given the, at least that was my previous disposition, given the, uh, given the fact that we have freed up a potential large amount of funds from the East Street School, uh, that desire for less is not as big as it was before. Uh, Matt. I'm in favor of this amount. Okay, Tim. Um, I'm in favor, but I have a suggestion. <laughs> to save time, can we just have the people who have a, have a problem with the number rather than just calling on everybody and saying they agree? Does that make sense to me? I, don't uh, think, I think it'll be quicker to do it this way, actually, Tim, because uh, right. it's just a one word answer from others. And I have a hard time sorting through the um, <laughs> sorting through okay. and picking everybody. Uh, reasonable suggestion, but um, I see your hand, Michelle. We'll get back to you. Uh, so, Tim, do you have a you said you're fine oh, no, with this amount? Fine. OK, uh, David. Uh, I'm fine with it. Uh, Katie. Yes, I'm in favor. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, I didn't mean to raise my hand. Um, I'm in favor of it. I would also support a lower amount um, yes. allocating some elsewhere. OK, uh, thank you. So uh, East Street Project 1.8 versus 4 million. Essentially, what this indicates is that instead of the 1.8, the town, the town of Amherst would buy two different avenues, seek to provide 1 million instead of 1.8. Uh, Dave uh, Zomack has indicated that there's been some uh, amenability to that. Uh, so we're gonna go the way we did before. So Andy, you would be first on this regarding 400,000. In favor of this amount. Okay, uh, Matt, oh, excuse me, I'm next. I, I am in favor of this, Matt. I'm in favor of it. Um, Tim. Yes, fine. David. Yes. Katie. Yes. Michelle. In favor. Robin. In favor. Okay, and Andy, you already spoke on this, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. So the next one is the rental subsidy at 68,000. I'm not in favor of this. I would like to fund this at the full amount of 205,000. 200 for three years. I believe there's efficiencies of operation and consistency, uh, particularly when you're dealing with housing. Uh, those at risk, uh, I think it's a very uh, successful program that has demonstrated uh, a track record of uh, achieving results. And I would wish to, I would not wish to reduce their request to one year, <clears throat> my opinion. Um, uh, Matt. Um. I'm okay with one year. I don't, I prefer not to use CPA funds for this purpose. Tim. Um, I actually liked your idea, Sam. Uh, and uh, where, but the question is where we get those other funds, something else would have to give and perhaps they'd come out of the uh, trust funding because take it out of their balance. I don't know. 
that's just my thinking on that one. So you you would prefer a, a higher amount? Well, I wouldn't prefer. I, I just, I think one year is fine. I'd be nice to fund it for more than one year. But if we go up up from the 68,400, where would we get that other those other funds? Since Sean's analysis basically allocates everything according to what funds we have available. So we'd have to, something else would have to give. I guess that's a discussion we can have as we go through where people think on these. Uh, I would come up with a few different alternatives as to where to get that funds from. Well, uh, okay. My answer short is I'm flexible on that one. Okay. Um, David. I support it. You support the one-year funding? Yes. Okay. Uh, Katie. I would be in favor of supporting at least two years um, and would highly, I'd love to do three if we could. Okay. Um, Michelle. I support three years and I think that money could come from Pauline. Thank you. Uh, Robin. Um, I highly support three years and uh, it seems like the money might still be able to come out of reserves. I'm not sure. Uh, Andy. Yeah, three years would be ideal for me. Um, three years, okay. I agree with Michelle. I think maybe if, if, if we pull from one, now we pull from ball lane first, but reserves, if that's viable, would be <clears throat> an opportunity too. I've heard uh, five people in favor of three years, two or three years, and one who's flexible. I would suggest that we consider changing that amount to the 205 and then think about where we get it, where we reduce it from, based on the fact that you know five members is could, majority. Could you maybe uh, just leave the original number in and like highlight it or something, just so we'll call our attention? Because um, it's not the other number isn't written down elsewhere, right? Say that again. I think it'd be useful just to leave the sixty-eight number and just highlight the cell, so we'll know to come back to it. Turn it green. Sixty-eight. Uh, I don't recall what one third of that was. Um, I think it was 68.4. That's a fine, that, that would be fine. If, I, I would actually change the background of the block green so that we can really see it as opposed to the, uh, as opposed to the, uh, tech, the font of the uh, numbers. Yeah. <laughs> can that be changed? Uh, yellow is one way of doing it. Although I'd, I'd actually, cons there was a significant interest in that one. Uh, so we see that's highlighted. Conservation of Mabel, Mabel Tawn painting 16450. Um, I spoke first last time, Matt. Agree. Tim. Um, again, I for that small amount, I'm not sure why we wouldn't just try to fund it, have them come back and ask for the money out of the fiscal 23 funds and just be done with it. But do you want to fund it? So, uh, what? Do you it's want to fund it? I would, I would not fund it for 24. I would have them come back and ask for it in 23. Next year? No, this year. Oh, you mean have them come back and ask as a cash reserve? To come out of the existing $500,000 we have in reserves right now. We can transfer reserves into this fiscal year and apply them towards this group of projects? Um, uh, is that not correct? Sam, can I? Uh, one second, Robin. Yeah. Sure. So, Sonia, can we transfer? The, okay, I, I'm not going to be. Excuse me, Tim. That was just my six. I'm fine okay. with, with funding it, then not yeah. a problem at all. Hang on a second. So, Sonia, are we able to allocate existing fiscal year 23 reserves? Are we able to put those, take them out of reserves and use them towards the fiscal year 24 budget or not? You'd have to you'd have to table it and come back to, to it. Thank you. Um, yeah, Robin. I think it might be. I'm not sure when the moment is is going to be when it's helpful to clarify um, the appropriate use of fiscal 23 reserves. Yep. If yep. now is the moment, I have a comment. <laughs> I'd say not now. I'd say we go through these, okay. and then we have that discussion. All right. Fair. But uh, Tim, your your comment in terms of your preference for how it was funded is noted. Um, David. Um, I'm fine with it. Katie. I'm in agreement. Michelle. Agree. Robin. I fully agree. Andy. Love it. 
Uh, Sam, very much in favor. Uh, Matt, did you speak on this yet? Yes, I already did. You already did. Okay, very good. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm trying to remember which one was first. Oh, I agree with it anyway. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, thank you. So there's very high level of agreement on this one. It doesn't appreciate here. There's going to be a need to change it. Dickinson Farmhouse Renovation. Uh, this is uh, listed at $97,020. Uh, Tim, I believe you're first on this one. Are you not? Uh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, David. Aye. Katie. I'm in favor. Michelle. Agree. Robin. Agreed. Andy. Agree. Me too. Okay. And uh, Matt. This is one I could defer. Okay. So Matt is considering that one for another point in time, although there's a lot of folks here. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, no, no, I'm not deferred discussion. I mean, defer to a future year. That's what I meant. That okay. uh, eight of the members were in favor, and you're thinking that we might uh, might put it at a later point in time. Um, barn renovation project assessment program, fifteen thousand with a request for ten thousand. Uh, what do we consider on this one, um, David? I'm fine. Katie. Yes, I'm in favor of this. Michelle. I'm fine with it. This was sort of a lower priority for me, but it's a fairly small number, so I'll go along with the consensus on it. Andy. Uh, yeah, I, I echo Michelle. Uh, my, my only question on this one is these the CPA coalition's reference to the uh, ability to use the funds for private uh, benefit. And I, in other words, would it or would it not qualify? I'm in favor of it. Uh, so unless there's something that indicates that it can't be funded accordingly, uh, I'd be fine. I would actually consider it at the $15,000 level as opposed to 10,000, but I see the benefit of the pilot nature of it. So either way uh, is fine by me. Uh, did I miss somebody here? Uh, you missed me, Sam. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, Robin, go ahead. I'm sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> um, that uh, yeah, in favor. Okay. favor. 10,000 is fine. We've never done it before. That's fine. I assumed you were in favor, possibly higher. Uh, Matt? 10,000 I'm good with. Okay. And uh, Tim? I am good with that as long as when we write our final report, if this is approved, we say that it's for a pilot program. Okay. And uh, David, did I call on you on this one? No, I'm fine. Okay. And I, I believe I spoke with you on the phone already, Katie. So uh, the preservation restrictions for CPA funded projects, that's being uh, put to zero. Um, I guess a separate question affiliated with this is, is if we would wish to alter the funding for the historic preservation amounts, uh, such as the historic, uh, such as the Dickinson farmhouse, to include the funding needed to create the historic preservation restrictions. We could have that discussion whether or not to add the HPR dollar amounts at a later point in time, uh, but it's something that is in discussion here. So uh, there's a dollar amount currently for the preparation of preservation restrictions for CPA funded projects at 20,000. And do we wish we, we could use these funds if we wished for the current CPA uh, historic preservation projects, if I understand it correctly. Anyway, uh, I'm talking uh, more than I need to on this. So the dollar amount is zero at present. We started, I believe, with David last time, uh, I think. So I'm going to start with you, Katie. Yeah, I I was confused over this and sort of who should be paying for this and how. And I, I understand the importance of it. And I, but I, I, I think zero is fine. And maybe we could have a further discussion about this um, in terms of going forward. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Michelle. Um, I mean, if we're not increasing any of the other costs to account for it, then we're just creating another backlog of these things that need to happen for next year. And if, if you know, it might come back to CPA next year, I hope that it's considered again. But in general, I'm in favor of actually supporting it. Supporting what? Funding the conservation. Okay. So you would like to see, you would like to see a dollar amount included in here. Okay. Um, Robin. Um, if the town has taken it off the slate, um, then I, I'm going to, I'm going to defer to the town's judgment. And so I support uh, not funding it for okay. their recommendation. Okay. Uh, Andy. Exact same as Robin. Okay. Uh, I have the same thoughts as Michelle on this, which is I'm uncertain how we, you know, if this will be an issue with existing um, pro with current projects to be approved. I don't want to approve the past and the consultant, but I do have questions about if this is going to be an issue for any of the existing uh, historic preservation projects, because I don't think it's appropriate to ask them to pay more down the road and we can't do it retroactively. If the town's judgment is that it's fine the way it is, uh, and it's not just a funding question, no problem. Uh, so I have two thoughts on it. Uh, Matt. I'm in favor of not funding this. I would prefer to see a clearer guideline from the town about solving this problem. Okay, um, Tim. Um, I'm actually in favor of it. My understanding is- In favor of funding it? Yes, because yeah. I think the town, because I believe the town's position was they would take the number out of this, but then redistribute that 20,000 to the other historic Projects so basically allocate the funding by increasing the requested amounts from the historic preservation requested projects. But maybe I misunderstood the town. So if we put zero, we aren't going to do it. And I don't think that's wise. I don't think that's what that's I That's not hear. what the town said? I, I think they're trying to do it, and they're just not succeeding right now. Well, Sean has his hand up. Yes, Sean. Yeah, I think, you know, I think talking with Dave, our, our perspective would be, I think, same way you recommended, which is add them to the other projects. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the CPA coalition said Correct. we shouldn't have a project that's just to do these restrictions. It should be added to the individual that's projects. That's what I thought. Them. Correct. So, so we'd be in favor, uh, supportive of that if you were to increase the other ones, you know, by a few thousand dollars each or something to reflect that. And perhaps the town could come back with a list of other projects, although I don't know if that's how that's going to fly. But thank you, Sean, for clarifying. Tim, does that? Uh... Well, if if that's the case, I would favor putting the 20000 back because it's going to affect the total. Well, we can, re we can revisit the individual um, because we'd have to actually add them to the individual projects. As I know, to but for now, why don't we put the 20 in and then at some point when we redistribute, take the 20 out because it just affects the total. We, right now it's zero. So that 2,696,000 really should be 2,730,000 uh, uh, or 716. My understanding right? is it's about $4,000, give or take, per historic preservation project, according to what I heard from the presentation. Oh. And so if we had three historic preservation projects that we were approving, it would be somewhere around $12,000. Uh, Sean. Do you have a comment, Sean? Your hand is up. Is it down? Sorry, that was that was left over for me. Robin, first. do you have a comment related to this? Um, yeah, I was just going to say if we add what three or four, whatever the town recommends to a project, um, the funds are they have to be re it's a reimbursable request. So if if the cost comes up to be two thousand dollars, then the money just goes back into the pot, right? You're suggesting uh, that it's preferable yeah, to add them to I the projects. Can I suggest that we just add, I'm not sure if it's three or four, David can answer that, but we could add it to the projects and then deduct that would it. Be, from the, that would be my it, suggestion. And deduct it from the admin fee, admin budget. Uh, I'd like to let's hang on on the admin first because uh, we could deal with that with cash, cash amounts. Um, so I, I'm not in favor at present of removing the admin budget until we talk about it again, which we could, Sonia. Um, well, I just want to remind everybody we still have fifty-three thousand dollars in previous year admins. I understand. So. We can we can come back to that. 
Um, the question at the moment is the, um, do we wish to allocate anything for this $20,000 proposal, which the town says zero, and in conjunction with that, if we make it zero, do we want to add them to the individual projects? Uh, David, your hand was up first. Go ahead. Do you have a comment, David Zomack? Yeah, very quick. I, I would add five or six thousand dollars per project. I mean, this is okay to the project. This is yeah. This is going to be legal yeah. costs. I mean, okay, two or three thousand dollars. If you all know how far that'll go with with attorneys and and or consultants, it doesn't go very far. Uh, Andy, I would add a minimum of five to six thousand per project, and I I think it's a good idea. Andy, yeah, I think you would take estimate. All right, so what I'm hearing is that let's continue with this discussion on this one. Uh, the consensus seems to be that we can add it to the individual projects for those that are in favor. Uh, I was speaking with Tim, were you the last person to speak on this? Yeah, and uh, I guess based on what Sonia just said, I, <laughs> I would go back and reduce it min down from 25,000. We can get to that. Okay. Uh, so on this one, though, uh, it's your thought that it's okay to have it zero, but to then now add that it. I understand that, I just did, I just didn't want it to not happen if it was zero. I understand. No, I I think most folks here are in agreement with that. Um, David, we're talking about the zero dollar amount on the preservation restrictions. Does that uh, make sense based on what you've heard? Um, I'm I'm in support, but that is clear. Needs some clarification. Okay. Questions are being asked that uh, I don't think we're getting. I'm not getting the answers that uh, I think we should be getting. Okay. Uh, my suggestion on this, uh, who did I start with here? Uh, Katie, have you had a chance to talk on this one? Yes, I think I started. Okay. So my suggestion on this one is that after we go through all of these projects, we will come back and we will discuss uh, certainly, the adding uh, four or five thousand dollars to each of the um, historic preservation building projects within this uh, spreadsheet context. But for now, to allow us to continue with what we're doing, uh, there, there's one alternate way we could do that. Uh, we've only had one historic preservation project so far, which is the Dickinson Farmhouse. Let me, let me ask this. Uh, we have a spreadsheet that references $97,020. Uh, would would the uh, folks like, to, would, I'd like to ask the committee members if they would be in favor of having $5,000 to cover, cover legal expenses uh, for uh, historic preservation restrictions to this project, which we could then uh, if there's any excess, it gets kicked back. So I'll start and say I'm in favor of adding $5,000 to the Dickinson Farmhouse Roof Renovation, and I will do so for the other historic preservations. Uh, Matt, are you in favor yeah. of doing that? Okay. Uh, Tim. Oh. Um, and I understand that we you want to have it reduced elsewhere. Okay. I, I guess I'm totally somewhat confused in terms of maybe but being an old town meeting member i didn't think we could add any funds to applicants we can only decrease funds i believe we can add them uh, if we can i'm in favor of it. if we can't then i would just put it in the individual line item but i don't sean know. or sonia are you aware of whether or not we can give more than is requested i believe we can yeah, that is, um, i think that's a council a council can't add uh, right the council what? The council can add. Can or cannot? Cannot, when, based on your recommendation, but I think you guys can add. We can add it. They can't add anything to what we recommend, but we can add it to the applicant request. Yeah, that's my understanding. I mean, we'll, we'll double check on it, but that's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, well, if, if we can add, I think that's a cleaner way of doing it. If okay. we cannot, yeah, I would say, okay. So let's put it up there with five, does 5,000. That's what Dave is telling us is, desired for these um so let's go through the list let me um i said yes matt said yes tim you're saying yes david uh, this uh is yes and i'll just say yes okay katie i will say yes if we reduce the administrative got it yeah, that, yeah. that's oh, an if i will get there um michelle 
Let me ask to all of those. Um, I'm not in favor of reducing administrative too much because it'll probably okay. be needed. But I also just want to ask if it can be restricted to be used for the historical restriction or if it's just going to go into the pot of money and you know if they will probably need another five thousand dollars if it might get overlooked we will in, we will track it we will make with our request the recommend the, the reference that uh fees yeah, for I, his I, I would only be in favor of that five thousand could only be used for those purposes because yes. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that Correct. it wouldn't always cost five thousand, and some of it would roll back. Correct. I believe we're all under the same assumption here, uh, and we can communicate that within our, our request recommendations. Um, who was the last person to speak in terms of being in favor of this? I was. Uh, that is Michelle Robin. Uh perfectly in favor. Can I just, uh, I just have a question about time, Sam, I think. About what? About time. I'm just noting the time. Yeah. And it would be great if um, we could get a sense of what, how late we're expected to go each meeting and when the time rolls around that we should be winding down, um, that we check in and, and see how much further. It just, by nine o'clock, it gets hard to not have a sense of yeah. when, when we're going to wrap up. Um, it, it's not, there's no specific time. Uh, I'd like for us to, at a minimum, continue with the uh, historic preservation projects and get a sense of the committee. Uh, I don't think we'd go past another 45 minutes here. Uh, I think it's important that we make a little progress on what we're talking about right now. Okay. Uh, I don't know how quickly it's gonna go, but I think going through this one time while we're all here and it's in hand makes sense. So I'd like to continue. Um, and I hear what you're saying, Robin. Uh, the next topic, the next item, uh, person to speak, we heard from, uh, was it you, Robin, last? Forgive me. I just, I just was, gave it the thumbs up. You gave it to Andy. Yes. Okay. And I already said yes on this and Matt did. So I believe that's everyone's in favor of increasing that one and Sonia has already done so. Uh, historic barn, we already went through that proposal. We went through the preparation of restrictions. Everyone said no if we did it elsewhere. The next one is the Zion Church. This has a zero dollar amount on it. It is a historic preservation project. Um, this one might be a slightly longer conversation. Uh, I'm gonna skip ahead to the South Congregational Church first and then come back to the Zion Church. Uh, the his South Congregational Church has a request of 233289. Uh, could we add $5,000 to that, Sonia, for the purposes of our talking about it? Uh, I'd like to start with uh, Michelle. Yes, in favor. Of Robin. Items. In favor. Andy. Yes. I'm in favor of it. Matt. I'm in favor. Tim. Favor. David. Yes. Katie. Yes. Okay. So uh, this next one is one that uh, I'm not sure how this discussion will go, but let's uh, open up talking about the preserving the Zion Church, which currently has a zero dollar amount rec recommended for it. This is an interesting one because it's a question of whether or not we want to hear more details on this project or whether or not we want to fund the uh, proposal in its current uh, uh, application form. I believe, Robin, you're first on this one. So are we weighing in just on whether to load the project with another 5,000 or we're now we're back? We are not. Okay. Uh, we, well, we could we could do so because for any historic preservation project, we're going to need to. Yeah, so no, yes, that's fine. I just I'm just trying to figure out what we're. Sonia, doing. please put five thousand to the left of this project as we begin discussing it. Uh, the nature of my answer is that. Uh, sorry, my brain is getting a little tired. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that we should not be. I am in favor of funding this with FY23 funds, either, well, ideally at, uh, with a revisiting of the proposal. I would like to see it excluded from FY24 funds uh, 
with the provision that the expectation is that something would be funded with a 4.35. So your reference would be you like the project, but you'd like to table it for discussion related to future fiscal year 23 application yes. and funding. Yes. Okay. Uh, Andy. Yeah, I actually have the exact same answer to that. And then okay. I don't know in terms of that 5,000, then whether it would come off or we would just roll that into that future discussion. So your thought is you're in favor of tabling it in relation to a more specific proposal in terms of what they want to have done? For their urgent short-term need, yes. Okay. And are you also in favor of funding it with cash reserves in fiscal 23 as opposed to fiscal year 24? I am. Okay, because that's something that I don't know if it was factored into this or not. I don't think it was. Sean's spreadsheet had a 271 balance in the cash reserves, if I understood correctly. Uh, if we were to fund this, I believe it would reduce that amount further. Uh, uh, my opinion on this is I'm in favor of funding the most urgent need affiliated with this uh, in <clears throat> Ideally in fiscal year 24, but I'm not sure that they're going to be able to come back with a proposal in time. Uh, so I'm in favor of, I would be in favor of tabling it for a further discussion and we might even be able to get more information by in advance of next week, uh, since we're not voting on it now anyway. Uh, Matt. My sense is that the final amount combined with 23 and 24 is going to be something like that. 150,000 plus the 5,000. So mm -hmm. my concern is uh, that's going to come out of what in this Sean's proposal, the reserves, which is going to basically leave with very little final reserves because he's already using um, two, half of the reserves and then this would take most of the rest. Correct. So my concern is we're getting, we're starting to run close to the edge. So are you indicating you are in favor of supporting this project or not? Uh, and... I think, I think, I think, I think that everyone, well, my, I'm in favor of supporting roughly that amount because yeah. I think that's what's going to actually happen. Yep. But then my concern is How are we going to have to find some savings elsewhere. Okay. Um, Tim. Uh, <clears throat> I would agree with that, and I think um, we need to un better understand what projects would uh, w what would receive allocation from those reserves. I just don't under quite understand that, and I would agree with Matt that we should be careful about using the reserves. I would put zero for reserves for fiscal 24 use, but spend them now to reduce the reserve amount, if that makes sense. The other question I had was, uh, I'm not at all comfortable with a 5,000 historic preservation for a quick uh, repair or doing an emergency repair. I think we should wait till they more fully describe their project before we put in a historic preservation. It just doesn't make sense to me to put an historic preservation for a quick roof fix uh for a reason for a small amount of money right now that just doesn't so that would be a comment on that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars well i know uh, that but true but you're saying fix that, it without a restriction I, if it's I an emergency if yeah if for an emergency it's an emergency repair but then once it's repaired then we have to debate whether or not we can't do much more with that. And at that point, if we allocate more money, we can put on yeah. the 5,000 for the historic preservation. Right. Uh, David? Um, I support uh, the project. Okay. Uh, does Katie, that make sense? Yes, it does. Katie? Um, yeah, I don't want to make this zero. I'd like to support the project as discussed before in terms of the urgent need um, and what, you know, the 150 or approximately. Um, so how it gets done, whether it's reserves or not is, okay. you know, it's, that's, we can figure that out. But I, I wanna make sure that this is, I just wanna say, note something that Michelle said earlier and I'm sensitive to this too. And I think, Andy referenced this, and I don't want to lose it, which is 
you know, we have two projects that are very similar to historic churches. And one is, a, you know, a fairly well resourced in terms of numbers of people and community members supporting and another that isn't. And it does seem like um, it's important for us to take that into consideration. And so I, I really would want to emphasize the support for this project. Mm -hmm. um, and I also just want to say that I do think reserves are meant to be used at some point, and especially in a year like this when there's so, so many requests and that, you know, the reserves got built up over time because, you know, we had the ability to do that so that for a moment like this, it could be okay. used. Michelle, did you have a chance to speak on this one? No, but I, I echo Katie. Uh, okay. What I meant talking about resources for this project was that um, there was a lot of participation in the application for the South Church, and there wasn't really that available resource, not necessarily money, but just um, investment and the kind of people that were able to submit. Um, so I don't want it to get overlooked because they may not have been able to have it. And so I, so I support this and I don't know how it should be funded, but I'm in, no. I'm in favor of reserves. Sonia, can you highlight this box please in yellow or green? You know, it seems to be yellow is the standard uh, to the right because it seems that uh, the committee members are in favor of doing something on this project. And the question is how we're gonna fund it. Uh, that's what I'm hearing from, from folks. And so this is one, but again, we're gonna have to discuss at a later point in time. Uh, it's a, could you also highlight, Sonia, the administrative uh, budget of 25000 even though we said we we're in favor of it? I'm hearing people referencing that as a possible offset to the historic preservation restrictions that we're considering. Uh, I'm going to push on uh, conservation area improvements. There's a request for $100,000. Uh, Sean's, uh, Sean's uh, the town's reference is $70,000. Uh, and uh what are our general thoughts on this michelle if yeah i'm in favor okay uh robin in favor andy in favor i'm in favor of a lower amount uh i'm not sure what that lower amount would be uh it would probably be uh 25 to fifty thousand dollars uh based on the fact that there's existing funds uh matt i'm in favor okay uh tim uh, favor. David? I'm in favor. Katie? I would recommend a lower amount. Okay. Um, so this one, we have a couple of folks who, you know, this is for general discussion. We can revisit these, but there's certainly majority who are in favor of it. Um, Parker Farm Playgrounds. This is a biggie. Um, and the first person on this one would be, I believe, Andy, currently the request is three million. Their actual uh, update was for two point two million or two point four million, I believe. Wait, Crocker Farm. Same. Oh, we skipped Crocker Farm. Excuse me, Crocker Farm. Four hundred fifty thousand dollars is a reference for zero dollar amount. Yeah. Um, if, Andy. If, yeah, if Doug Slaughter is comfortable pulling it, I am too. Okay, so am I. I'm in favor. I'm comfortable with zero next year. Matt. I'm comfortable with zero. Tim. We. Pardon? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Uh, Sorry. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear it. Uh, David. I'm fine with it. Uh, Katie. Yes. Agreed. Michelle. Agree. Robin. Agreed. Okay. Next one is the Fort River Community uh, Recreation Fields Project. The application initially was three million. The actual request. Uh, based on subsequent communication, I thought it was 2.4 million. It might be 2.2 million. Uh, Sean had a zero in this with the suggestion that it be funded through um, through a bonding, possibly be funded through a bonding mechanism, which would add uh, a fair amount to each. Uh, I'm not in favor of the current total. Um, it's of the of the total in this spreadsheet, nor of the total of the request. The request is too much money, I believe, for our budget. I am in favor of added, allocating a small amount uh, to this, not the request, not the uh, updated request from the applicants, but a smaller amount, conceivably taking some from the other large projects, whether it be the 
uh, affordable housing trusts or the uh, bowling community fields. Uh, the amount I would be uh, considering would be a small amount, uh, given the fact that this has to go forward in front of the, uh, as we all spoke before, in front of the uh, uh, taxpayers uh, to see if they want to do it, and that it's a small percentage of it. So my ag of C would be for a uh, 150 or 200,000 for this. That's me. Um, Matt. So you, I just question of clarification, you would request 150 or 250,000 out of FY24 funds. I would one way or another, whether it be, oh no, I would request that to be bonded or funded oh. otherwise. Okay. So I, I support a $0 out of 2024 funds. Yeah. Um, I would support bonding a partial amount say okay. for example just the materials portion uh you're you're saying not the fields portion but you're saying the uh well like okay. half of the fields portion okay a, a sort of a, you support bonding very good um uh, bonding but not the full two million i understand uh tim uh i support zero and zero david um I support. Uh, I support the project. Okay, uh, Katie. Wait, I David, are you supporting it as it's here? Is bonding for three million or? I think two point two. I, that's excuse me. Yes, yeah. David, are you saying you support the project? Uh, however, we're able to fund it, whether it be bonding as opposed to uh, for. Uh, as opposed to the uh, current fiscal year 24, 1.9 million? Who did you ask that? I, I'm asking you, David. Oh, um, if that's the direction we need to move in, the town and the um, committee, okay. um, CPA committee decide, then that's the way we should go. So you're you're in favor of funding it one way or another. Uh, Sean, yes. I just wanted to um, two things. One, the email we got from the uh, applicants was 2.2 .2 million. Okay. And just a reminder, if we did go with debt, it, the debt would start sometime in FY26 or FY27. Got it. Uh, yep. Bye. Um, Katie, did you speak on this one yet? No, not yet. I still feel I, yeah, I, I have to be convinced about the timing of this and, and, um, and would only, uh, you know, favor a lower amount and, and uh, okay. debt financing, but I still have to be convinced. Okay. Uh, Michelle. I would favor a lower amount of debt financing. Lower amount debt financing? Yep. Okay. Uh, Robin, did you speak on this one yet? I have not. Um, I'm with Katie. Um, I think I'm somewhere between Katie and Tim. Um, I definitely don't support it as it stands. And um, I might be in favor of a smaller amount, but we don't have room for it in FY24. Yep. And I don't understand um, quite the urgency for it. So I think I'm more of a zero zero, but um, it's okay. such a confusing project that I understand. Sure. Uh, Andy. I'm going with zero, zero. Okay. So we've heard from everyone, there's a mixture of some who want to support some uh, via bonding, some who don't want to support any. Uh, it certainly warrants further discussion. I don't know, I, I would put a yellow next to it and that it's one we should talk further about if you're able to, Sonia. Uh, the yellows mean different things uh, to different folks, I guess. Uh, in yeah. fact, yes. Somebody speaking? Sorry, it was me. I interrupted you. I apologize. Uh, yes, Katie. Um, I'm just wondering, um, for my sake, to have to be convinced or to have a better understanding, more information. I, I'd like to know where the town stands on this. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not. Uh, There's no comment, and there won't be a comment. Is that? All I've heard. I've heard from Sean is that uh, 
he, he they want to be very careful about the communication and the financing for the school project and communicate it all in one go yeah. which hasn't happened yet and hopefully will happen in a month or so so uh we heard from the school committee who indicated they were in favor of recommending the fields project uh in general as it relates to the school uh but at this moment we don't have further information and if there's uncertainty that's certainly fine to influence how someone feels about it um, um so sam just one, sorry one procedural question i i've never i don't think in my time we've tabled something and then revisited it say in january february um so is that possible so that when i was just going to suggest that that you table it it's going to be a borrowing anyways right and and um that can come off cycle because there's the debt service doesn't happen until later on so i suggest if you need a lot more information when we get more information that we can give you i would just table it for the for the time being let's keep it yellow meaning uncertain uh because we may we don't know if we're going to table it or not but right a, right I just wanted to understand if that was possible yeah. thank you we we have different opinions on this which means to me that it warrants mm -hmm. uh uncertainty regarding the budgeting amount we're highlighting the ones that are in yellow at present upon initial review of the committee members that have uh consideration for redoing I would if we're going yellow on all of these I would make the rental I would make the rental subsidy one uh highlighted in green if you can Sonia uh since it is distinct from these other ones that one had uh pretty much unanimous uh not unanimous but it had a majority of folks who were in favor of it can you turn the number four uh rental subsidy phase two to a green background please or a light green background um and I won't do that with the administration because we've had consideration to redo it but it's a distinction when we come next week so we'll know what we're talking about uh two other proposals here I believe we went through everybody on the Fort River did anyone not have a chance to speak on Fort River did you have a chance to speak Michelle Michelle yes I I spoke okay so we went through all those uh two more and uh, I want us to let's go through them since uh and then we can stop for the evening uh, since this is an initial understanding I think it's helpful for us to give us a set, step of where we are uh war memorial pool we started with uh who spoke first on Fort River I think it was me so Matt war memorial bathhouse preliminary design uh the suggested budget amount is 200,000 I'm in favor okay uh Tim uh I'm in favor of both okay uh David I've been in favor Katie I'm in favor Michelle in favor Robin um I'm in favor with the caveat that if we needed to take money from somewhere and put it into with a rental subsidy this might be a possible place uh Andy I'm a yes uh and I am in favor as well uh next one is the war memorial pool improvements um Tim Oh, I just said yes, fine. Yeah. Uh David. Yes. Katie. I would go lower. Okay. Uh Michelle. Yes. Robin. Lower. Andy. Yes. Um I'm in favor of based on what I heard this evening. Uh Matt. I'm in favor. I think my ideal solution would be the town capital budget supported part of it though. Okay. So um, I think we've made uh, significant progress in terms of honing in where we're going thanks to the input from Sean and his staff and David. Uh, we still have uh, further discussions related to how we're really going to get to financing these. Uh, a few of the big ones are what are we going to consider to do with uh, Fort River uh, and are we going to uh, what are we where might funding come from the uh, rental subsidy for the rental subsidy program uh, whether or not we're going to go off budget related to the Zion Church um, in meeting cash uh, um, cash reserves and um, that's the majority of them there are differing opinions we do still need to consider 
what we may or may not want to have in terms of our capital reserves. Uh, we can, you know, what would be the desired amount for us to retain in capital reserves, for lack of a better term? Um, Tim, I see that your hand is up. Yeah, I was just before we uh, leave the meeting, I would like, like Sean's probably going to do it anyway, but I, I would like to get a copy of that spreadsheet on the debt, you know, the debt schedule that he had proposed, when the, the library debt is coming on, when the whatever the other one was, and then what his proposal was for the debt coming on for some of the other big projects. The impact of the debt related were there to be bonding for the yeah he showed a spreadsheet of that and I I'd love a copy of that uh, okay um, I see another hand up which is uh, David Williams his hand is down now it's back up David Williams yes um, an observation um, or oh, a question first. It, is it my understanding, be sure that I'm correct before I make my statement, that the preserving the Zion Church received zero in funding? That it has not been determined at this point in time. Uh, we have highlighted it as something that we need to identify how we might fund it. Uh, members have expressed interest in uh, meeting the immediate need of this. Uh, and the question is, would we seek additional information from the applicant with more clarity on what they propose and whether or not we would fund it with cash reserves or whether or not we would fund it with fiscal year 24. That's my understanding. Uh, the, the thought was we could table it at this time with the consideration to fund it through fiscal year 23 reserves. But if we were to do so, that would redu reduce our cash reserves balance. So it has not yet been determined um, how we wish to proceed with that project. What we've done here, uh, none of them are final, but we've tried to identify where there might be consensus or where there's certainty of further discussion. We have a few highlighted in yellow where we know we need to discuss further. That would be the uh, administrative fee, minor, but do we want to reduce the HPR funding for the other projects from that? There is the rental subsidy, uh, support for raising it to the 205, although how are we going to do that? Because uh, it's a, you know potentially a zero-sum game, potentially, we could also bond. There is the Zion Church, which there seems to be a recognition of the need to uh, deal with the immediacy of the roof, but how are we going to do so? And then there is the Fort River uh, Fields project, uh, where there's uh, quite a distinction among the members in terms of how they want to proceed. So it is not yet a zero. We have not voted on any of these, David, but we are trying to get an idea of what we think about them. Does that help at all? Thanks. Okay, Michelle. Um, just quickly, before we discuss um, taking money out of admin, would be, it be possible to see the fees and, I don't know, some kind of dismantling of what is an admin so we know just how what we're taking from? Sure. Thanks. We, we can revisit that further as well. I don't think we're going to make decisions at this point in time, but you're asking for clarification. Just for the what... next time when we discuss how much we might be taking out of admin. And, and Sonia did indicate there's a budget amount. We could look at what the current budget is on it and what we have spent in past years. There may be some expenses coming for signage, David, and our committee has voted, uh, really it's been a couple of years at this point, to fund signage throughout, including conservation trails to add uh, the fact that CPA could uh, uh, contribute to these, but that has yet to come to fruition. When that occurs, there'll certainly be a drawdown on the administrative fees. At least that's my that's what we allocated the funds to. But we don't have details. Certainly, we can get a budget update from Sonia uh, related to the, and we may have already seen it. Uh, uh, we can highlight that when we begin to discuss that. If that answers the question. Yes, great. Thanks. Okay. Um, so we've talked a lot. We haven't 
come to conclusions on anything, but we seem to be moving towards consensus. Uh, the, the areas that I'm seeing of significant discussion are, you know, what do we or don't we wish to have in cash reserves? Um, in other words, is there a minimum amount that we don't wish to go below or not? It's funding that we can do and how might that occur? Uh, I am, there's uncertainty on a few projects here. Uh, specifically how how might we proceed with the preserving Zion Church and if we funded that where would the money come from uh, there seems to be an interest in that and we may or may not seek to uh, I don't know how we're going to proceed on that table or not and there's also uncertainty related to the Fort River uh, recreational fields um, does anyone else here uh, is, is anyone else here aware of uh, uncertainties uh, related other than the four that have been highlighted. I say that with a caveat that we may wish to adjust some of the dollar amounts uh, of the unhighlighted uh, areas such as Ball Lane, Housing Trust, uh, whatever it might be uh, to fund some of the uncertain projects. But is there any a comment anyone wishes to make about something else that is of uh, that we have not recognized that we need to further discuss on the projects. So let me let me take a quick hand, show of hands of committee members to see. It's already nine thirty seven. We typically go from uh, six to nine, but this time of year is a little bit more problematic. There are two factors here. It is it is December fifteenth. And soon it will be the holidays and there's a time element that affi affiliated with things. We probably could, based on our discussions to date, come to conclusions in one more meeting. That's my belief. Uh, but if we were to uh, stop at this point, we need to schedule a subsequent meeting, which would be December 22nd, uh, which is a Thursday. Um, I would be available for that meeting. I'm curious uh, if other committee members would be available at that time. Uh, or let me rephrase that. Is there anyone who would not be available for next Thursday? I see Andy. Would that mean you wouldn't be able to participate at all or you wouldn't be able to be uh, in the moment? Uh, I'm not sure what the difference means, but but I would not be able to, to make a meeting on that Thursday. Okay. Uh, how about others? Um, I think it's important that we have all our committee members to uh, hone, chime in on their thoughts on the projects because there is a, a you know there is great significance of them. Tim, I'm, I'm, I'm also I'm happy. I mean, for expediency, I'm happy. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'm happy Go to ahead. email you with with my thoughts if okay uh, if that would be easier as well. Well, I, I couldn't, I don't believe I can vote on your behalf. Um, um, the alternative to not meeting next Thursday would be to continue on now. That seems to be not ideal uh, or to schedule a time different than next Thursday. So uh, Matt, you're shaking your head. Does that mean you wish to meet next Thursday? Can't hear you. I think we're done for the evening. Right, and I'm trying to, before we're done for the evening, identify when we're gonna meet next. Uh, and it could be next Thursday. I'm trying to get from the audience what time frame would work. Uh, are you Andy, suggesting, Sam, either the, either next week or the 29th, or are you suggesting going into January? I'm not sure I'm what the- I'm not, I'm not suggesting going into January because Sonia, I'm not sure how that works in relation to the town council and everything. Uh, do you have thoughts on this matter? Um, just for clarity, we we already had the um, date of the twenty second budget. I mean, scheduled. Okay. On the. Uh, yeah, I, I think we should be, go ahead and meet on the twenty second. And Andy, you can provide communications. Is there uh, anyone else who might not be able to make the twenty second? Okay. So um, that's what we're going to do. To are there any? I think we've made significant progress progress to the point where we're really going to be able to hone in on things at our next meeting. Um, I realize it's a protracted process, but I think it's a necessary one, uh, given what's uh, being discussed here. Uh, 
Um, yes. Uh, when do we expect to be voting on the slate? Is that at the next meeting? Not or? this evening. No, I understand that. <laughs> Do we expect uh, that the next meeting will be actually voting on the slate, or is that further discussion with another? That would be process? that would be the hope. The hope okay. would be that okay. we would get we would get to a point where we can do so. But until we get to that point, we can't vote. And you know, it's a function of our discussions. Really, I'm not going to set a deadline that we must vote at this day and prevent discussions from occurring. I'd like for us to continue with the process that we're using. And I think we're honing in on where we're at. So okay. I just I'm, wasn't sure if there was if there was a deadline deadline. There's not a deadline deadline, but I would like for us to be able to complete it next week. Um, I think we can do so, whether it be tabling items or voting on funding or voting on bonding. I really don't know. Uh, the thought process is we would have what we need to be able to do so next week. Um, because I think we'll be able to focus right on particular issues of budgets and financing, because we have a pretty good idea what everyone thinks about each project at this point, at least to my understanding. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call on members who are here with the recognition that soon we'll be ending this meeting. Um, I see two hands up. I see Andy just withdrew his hand. Now it's back up. Uh, Andy, do you have a comment? Yeah, I was just going to ask, uh, Sonia, could you email this to me just so I have the revised numbers for my Tim, I see that your hand is up. Yeah, I, I would certainly re uh, want us all to get this uh, sent to us. My my question, my, my concern is that we should vote when we have 100% participation. I do not feel comfortable if a member is not going to be there to, uh, particularly with some of these controversial projects, I think we need uh, everyone in attendance. So I have a con real concern about next week, unless we clearly understand how Andy feels on this. Uh, I, I don't want a project mm -hmm. to be either approved or shot down because of the absence of one member. I, I don't, um... What I'm hearing, Andy, is there's no way you can meet next week. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, we could conceivably try to identify a different day, or we could delay things further. Uh, my preference is that we complete the work that we have at hand, uh, and potentially we could identify another day in the week where we could meet. Is it just Thursday for you, Andy, and or other folks? Uh, we could do a, do, a, do a poll. Go ahead, Sonia. Is everyone available on the 29th? 29th? No, that's New Year's Eve. No, it's not. It's the day before, two days before New Year's Eve. I, I was just going to say that, uh, and I appreciate that comment, Tim. Um, the only, uh, I guess uh, another idea is you meet, you vote. If anything is within one vote, then I, I don't know. I mean, you could, you could approve a partial slate, but the only the only way I'm going to sway something is if we have a tie or we're, we're within one vote. I don't know that there's oh, okay. a project necessarily where we're actually that close, but, but I, I hate dumping it up. And and you know I can't make next week. Someone else may not be able to make the the one after. Sure. So I don't ever quite be able to here's the question. Uh, is there it, we could conceivably make tremendous prog projects progress next week with a final vote with everyone in attendance if we wanted. Is there anyone who cannot make the 29th? Tim, is your hand up? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, my hand was up, but that was a mistake. <laughs> is, is there is there anyone here who could not meet on the 29th? I, I, I just don't know yet. Honestly, I've got- So you might not be able to meet both? We've, we've not formalized or finalized our plans for that week. I'm, I, I would not want to say I could definitely make it. I might not be able to. Okay. Uh, given that, I think we need to meet next week. And if we get to the point where we uh, uh, choose to delay voting on projects, we could do so. But I think we should make progress and try to uh, go forward. Uh, so we'll, we'll retain our meeting for next week. And uh, Andy, I hear what you are saying regarding if there's something that's close. It would be good, I agree with Tim, for us all to be able to be present to proceed. But uh, at the same point in time, it's on our it's on our calendar, it's on our schedule, and we need to make progress. And even if that's progress, is to come up with a slate that we 
uh, choose the majority and not all, that, that's one way of doing so. Um, any further comments from anyone in, who's here? Uh, sorry, but because I'm doing some traveling, the 29th, can we agree to meet on the 29th or not? If we don't, if we agree not to meet on the 29th, that's going to be helpful. If we agree we are going to meet, I, I need to know whether we're going to meet or not on the 29th. It's a function of what we get done next week, Tim. Oh, you mean we might be done? It's possible. If oh, there is unanimity okay. among seven members, uh, and uh, then that would be a majority regardless of uh, okay. Andy's presence or not. Okay. So I'll just tentatively put something there just in case. Got it. Yep. Thanks. So we have a schedule for next week, uh, which we will meet. Currently listed as six to nine. I realize we ran over today. I'm glad it did, though, because we finished out that portion that we needed to. And we'll see about the 29th. Um, and Andy, you're welcome to provide me uh, comments and or thoughts on anything you wish to make. Uh, unless I see comments from others, uh, I'll shortly adjourn the meeting. Sonia, if you're able to provide that spreadsheet, Sonia or Sean, to uh, the committee, that would be great, uh, as well as the debt um, listing through 2026 that Tim was referencing. Uh, if we have further questions or comments regarding some of the issues that came up, if we have further information regarding some of the issues that came up during discussion, we'll provide those as well. So um, with that being said, I'm going to Adjourn the meeting at 9.47 p.m. with our next meeting to be next Thursday, the 22nd at 6 p.m. Feel free to email me and or Sonia. Thank, Thank you, everybody. See you.